Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's feeder and come back around. It's a new leaf, Steve. I've, I'm what? gonna do, do, do properly now. I'm not gonna be slovenly. I'm sitting up straight, you see. Yep. And it's gonna be a proper DJing, because I think... Coming up soon, some great tracks, including a new one from Abs and an old one from Snow. <laughs> Informer. <laughs> you know me, that every storm, yeah, kaboom, a licky boom boom down. I'm joking, of course. We've got some fantastic tracks. It's a great yeah. chat, and we've got Carl that's with me, great Steve. Chat. Steve. I'm Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9. There he is, indeed, with him, Steve Merchant. And, uh, Carl Pilkinson, of course. Say hello, Carl. Alright. Yeah, nice. And, uh, you, you say you're in- The what? beginning of a radio show is very much your wares, your shop window, laying out your stall. I don't think you can choose a better track than The Only Ones, Another Girl on the Planet. I'd love to hear it. Another planet. One of my favourite intros, that. Amazing. Oh, that was dangerous, because I once heard on Capital Radio, um, this has got to be the greatest rock intro of all time, and they played Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I can just imagine them putting their head down. I remember a friend of mine at, uh, when I was at school, he he just bought a car, and he took me outside to show off the stereo system, Money for Nothing. Just to, just <laughs> really? to, he just played that, I've never heard the song before, just played that for its entire four or five minute duration. It is a to good show song the, uh, for- the sound system. Yeah, it's a good song for showing off intros <laughs> and sound <laughs> yeah, systems. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You said you were driving along earlier, you saw someone, uh- Are you, are you, uh, yeah, like, yeah, it was a, one of those zooped up sort of, um, uh, sporty saloons. Nice. You know, the big, like a Mondale or something, those big, and, uh, it was blaring out, and the bloke in it was sort of like, I could tell he was twenty four, but already going bald. <laughs> Yeah. For, from, like, obviously his estate agency job, not too <laughs> yeah, well. yeah. He's made a bit of money and he's got- and the stereo was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, so loud and it was going through Covent Garden. He was playing Snow in Former. <laughs> oh! I just- do people remember Informer by Snow? It was a big tune in I don't, I don't know. It's- it's great. Yeah, yeah, I- I, I always enjoy it. Can I bring that in next week? Can we play no. Snow next week? No. Well, you can play a tiny little bit tiny of Tiny little bit of Snow. Yeah. Do you remember the Snow car? Yeah, 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 big tune. Yeah. yeah. Loved it. Oh, yeah. did you? Yeah. Big tune for yeah. the 90s. Happy song, isn't it? Wait, you were yeah. saying that you've turned over a new leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in all aspects of your life or is that just in your broadcasting career? Because uh, the reason I bring that up is because do you want to describe what you were eating just now when we came in? Because well, you're a forty you're a forty year old man, you've got a little bit of weight, so presumably yeah. you're watching what you eat. Well, no, but it sounded exotic. I went Can into I, a cafe and, and I didn't I, they didn't have a cheese sandwich. Right. And uh can I describe what it looked like to me? <laughs> right, it looked to me like a big slab of cheese. You just got them to just <laughs> cut off a big block of cheese, like the size of a CD case, or yeah. th- one of those double albums, yeah. right, of yeah. cheese, right? And just lightly melt that for me, so yeah. it drips over my hand and it yeah. gets really greasy in the bag. But yeah. just lay some strips of bacon on the top. Yeah, but listen, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that yourself. what it was? No, it's a croque monsieur, so it's French. It's a what? A croque monsieur. A croque monsieur. Yeah, and so I got- I, I thought, I've Ooh. never heard of a croque monsieur. You haven't, let's see, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that how it's pronounced, or yeah. is it croque monsieur? Oh! Hey? <laughs> hey? Eh? Eh? You didn't not... expect me to be bringing out the French. Hey? <laughs> eh? Tu aimes la musique pop? Oui, je t'aime la musique pop. Le plume de ma tante. Où est le syndicat d'initiative? That means my aunt's pen. So, uh, what was it then? A croc- it was a croc- Yeah, croc- and it, and it was just too greasy. It yeah. was just too- and it was all wobbly. I- 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 well, I like toast, I like it to be crisp. Sure. It's the thing with like- what-, what? this is rubbish. Play Coldplay. <laughs> Yeah. Coldplay. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad, yeah. yeah. Not bad. Nice, not, nice little track. <laughs> well, Steve, um, we've been away now for what, 12, 13, 14 weeks? Is that really? Yeah. Why? Wow. I've been looking forward to coming back. It's great, it's great to be back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we've had uh, some 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 laughs, some tears in in the interim. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've had a few ups and downs. Obviously, been working on uh, the TV show, The Office, BAFTA winning, <laughs> uh, coming soon, fifty two. <laughs> but uh, uh, Rick, 30, I just, 30, make, 30, I just need to mention something quickly to you. Um, Go on. When did I last see you? I saw you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. Because um, we went up to Edinburgh yesterday. We were we were very nicely uh, invited to go and talk at the uh, Edinburgh International Television Festival. It was quite yeah. a big deal. We went up there and we were interviewed. And uh, Ricky chose to go on the train because it takes like four hours, it four and a half hours or something on the train. Yeah. But it's quite leisurely. It's quite yeah. gentle thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I opted to go for the plane option yeah. and fly up there. More modern. Exactly, and uh, and they they bankrolled that, they paid for it all, and yeah. so that was all not very nice. And uh, as I recall, when I last saw you, uh, we got a cab, didn't we? And, and you asked if you could get the cab to drop you off at the train station. Yeah. And then it took me on to the airport. Yeah. Um, did I- now that was- that was before- I, the last time I saw you was before I got to the airport and missed my flight, wasn't it? Because really? I- because I had to drop you off That's in the centre of town. Yeah, no, that- that was- so that was just before I had to pay £165 to upgrade to another How ticket. How did you not tell me that in the last hour? £165, Ricky. 
I had to pay because we dropped you off at the train station. So, I mean, do you want to go halves on that, or what do you want to, how do you want to deal with that? How do you want to sort that whole, that whole mess out? Why were you late? Why, why was I late? Because yeah. we dropped you off in the centre of Edinburgh, and yeah, you know how hard it is to get out of Edinburgh in rush hour traffic? But it was only, it was only three minutes away, so you'd no, have missed it anyway. No, because if we'd gone the other direction, it would have been twenty minutes. It took me like an hour to get to the tr to the airport. And I got there, and the plane had already left, <laughs> and the cabbie was just laughing. He was saying, we're never gonna make it. He goes, you were a religious man, you better start praying. I thought he was being facetious. He was absolutely right. A hundred and sixty-five pounds. hold on, why didn't he tell you that when he, when, when he picked up a well, quarter past four? It makes you wonder. So obviously, li I'm a little bit annoyed. Cause you know I'm not a man who likes to sort of spend unnecessarily. But wait, but wait, this is not my fault. Cause you were there when we made that decision. I didn't impose this on you. We both decided that might be- it's both our fault. I mean, it's no, no one's fault. It's both our fault. Is that <laughs> fair? That's all I wanted to hear. It's both our fault. Therefore, it's both our financial obligation. No. 165 pounds, just split that in half. <laughs> write a check, Rick. Write a check. It's fine. <laughs> I, I, said, I trust you. <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, phone in. Uh, I think everyone. This. This You're is. You're clearly responsible. No, of course I'm not. If you if you share a cab and then one person's lucky enough to not be late and one person is unlucky enough and that's what it is. Bad luck. I don't think you share the obligation. The but phone, it's, just, a mor it's a moral dilemma. This isn't it. But it's more than that, though, isn't Go it? On, because what? let's be honest. What? Um, even if you had known that it, I was going to get there late. You'd have wanted me to hang around just so you weren't left around waiting for a train on no, the No, cos I got Cos you get bored sitting no, there, so there. you'd have wanted me to at least got in that car I got there you. way too early. I right. actually got there about- I was there about 30 minutes Oh, so early. you made it fine then, that was- Well, that exactly. Was so, I mean, I did- I- I- I sacrificed <laughs> me hanging around for half an hour so you could get it at quarter past four. And the other thing is this. You were going to get it at quarter past four anyway. Yeah, but, but I would- if I'd gone the other direction and not dropped you off in the centre, I would have been there in well, time. Well, would we? Would we? Well, Is that yes. true? Well, only God knows. Well, and the cabbie. <laughs> <laughs> what I mentioned it to. <laughs> so, uh, I'll tell you what will cheer you up. I'll tell you what's better than 80 quid. I'll tell you what's better than- shall I? <laughs> Go on. Uh, music. What, are you paying the whole 165? <laughs> Listen, look, I've brought in a little track here, um, right. Bruce Springsteen, off the Tunnel Love album, and uh, I know you're a Springsteen fan. I was a Springsteen we're, fan. We're, we should just qualify this, because a lot of people who listen to XFM are obviously a bit edgy about Springsteen. They yeah. just think he's this old, kind of ludicrous 80s rocker, the bandana, you know, the, the fly in the flag, which he no, never that, really was. No, that was Bon Jovi. Exactly. Don't, you don't confuse them. Bon Jovi. But seriously, no, do you know what I mean? He did write some great music in the 70s. Yeah. And he's just got a little bit kind of pompous in the 80s, but he still turned out uh, some amazing tunes. One of which I imagine is this one, Rick. This one's called Brilliant Disguise. Come on. Springsteen there, Brilliant Disguise on XFM 104.9. I think that's, that soothed you a little bit. That's, uh, that's not really. taking the blood off. I, I just remembered something as well. 80 quid, Rick. 80 quid. You know what, uh, um, we finished the talk at about sort of three and we had a couple of hours to kill before we got the, uh, about that half two, wasn't it? We had a couple of hours before we got the, the taxi. And, uh, and we were eating in this cafe and, uh, uh, so he said, how long's your train journey? I said, oh, four and a half hours. He went, so you go, oh, sorry, I said, I'll get in about ten. He went, half six, me. Uh, and he's quite smug. And I went, yeah, I said, it is it's quite a long time. I just started to sort of relax now. Uh, he went, yeah, I said, but he said, I think I've come off better here. Because usually you've organised all this stuff. He said, but I think you've chosen wrong here. I, think, oh, I said, I think you're right. <laughs> Yeah. You? Don't you, you think those words were coming back to <laughs> haunt me as I was <laughs> handing over 165 <laughs> notes? I was, and, all I was thinking was, and Ricky's I was on the train be in first it. class drinking uh, John Smith's yeah. and listening to Mercedes Walkman. Yeah, but I handed over my initial card. <laughs> she said 165 quid then. I went, fine. I handed over the card. Uh, yeah. It was a Switch card. She said, we don't take Switch. Don't they? I was thinking, how, what am I going to do then? I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to get the money from. What did you do in the end then? Well, Go luckily the I had another card. Oh, right. And, um, and she managed to accept that one. But I, I don't know what I'd have done there. I don't genuinely You don't didn't know tell what me you had another card. <laughs> yeah, I got two cards. Have you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, that um, is depressing. I was so depressed because I just kept thinking about what I'd said to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've won this time. Because normally I'm always like legging it for tubes or I'm just, do you know, where I get stuck in the rain or and something. I've I just organised never the driver or something. something. Because when you get me to I said, well, it's up to you. It's up to you. You know what I mean? Every man for themselves. But this time it was four and a half hours and I was just in that 40 minutes on the tr on the plane, there'd have been no problem. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm so livid. Do you know, I got off the- because I'm just not very well either, I'm a bit ill at the moment. I got off the, the plane and I thought, well, 
I could get a cab from the airport all the way back home, but, you know, I've already been stung for 165 quid. Got the tube. <laughs> took me forever. Really? I'm not gonna lie to you, it took me forever. Oh, so I, got, I got in probably later than you did. Around <laughs> <laughs> the 11 o'clock mark. You didn't really? No, I wasn't quite as bad oh. as that. But I was so depressed. I'm really depressed, Rick, so I was saying 50 quid has well, me money, right I mean, Steve does not like to waste money, and, um, I mean, by that, I mean, I mean... I don't like to spend money. No. Um, we had to, he had to go out and get our shirt for a photo shoot, not a quite an important photo shoot for, I think, the, the Times, right? Went out, he was buying a shirt, buying a shirt, went out, planned it, weren't sure. Came back, four nine, fourteen ninety nine from Henny's. Henny's, fourteen ninety nine. He knew where he was aiming, he aimed straight for Henny's, he knew, he knew where he can get a bargain. Uh, this is a man. But I, it seems to me that at that kind of price, you can throw them away, Av. You don't even need to wash them, really. You can throw them away using, like, Kleenex. Have you ever thrown one away? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just scrape off the stains and keep on wearing it, Rick. Remember that time when we went to the casino for my birthday? Day, and I was like hundred quid down, and some people were hundred quid up and hundred quid down. Uh, he, after the three hours we were there, was down twenty pounds. Genuinely depressed. I was almost crying. Yeah. Because I don't. Well, it's because it's a, it's a mugs game gambling. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> was that where we? Because I went there. It was uh, when it was one time we went there. It was uh, our agent's. Oh, birthday. that was another time we went yeah. there. Right? And he was up. And he'd, he'd got a, uh, he got a win, he was 30 quid up. And so I said, it's your round then. <laughs> and the round was more than 30 quid. And he couldn't believe it. And he sat down and he went, I can't believe it. He said, and I bought him a present, so I was already down. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I turned out I was already down because I bought our agent a gift. He didn't, I didn't see him buy it. And you know that thing where you're buying a round of drinks for people you don't even know? So it's like, what's the story there? Why am I suddenly bankrolling new drinks? It's like, I don't know you people. I'm not going to get any kind of, I'm not going to see you again to sort of reap the benefits at a later point. Because he came in I'm with not, his three Most of you are married or engaged, so I'm not even going to pull from it. It was a waste of time. It was, it was like, just it, pure generosity. It was something like from Swingers, because he came into the cocktail bar holding three chips up worth ten pounds each yeah. and went, hello, <laughs> like that. Yeah, I was yeah. thirty pounds up. That's a lot of money, Rick. Uh, you know, Carl, you, yeah. you know that. Thirty quid. You don't want to sniff at that. Oh, what, what, what songs should we play? This, we've got lots of songs in. It's hard. Bit of, uh, bit of Incubus. Oh. Oh. Just a little more depressed. Oh. Do you know what I, mean? oh, I thought it was a bit slow. I know, but I'm a fan. I, I, I like slow I, songs, but I, I really, really like, do I've, always been, I've always been a fan, of, even from you know early days. Yeah. I, I thought his first song was really great and much maligned. People didn't like it because they were expecting like you know the verve. Yeah, yeah, urban hymns and all that. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, that's, that's that's great. On XFM one hundred four point nine. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Who's that little round-headed oh, fellow? He's Carl Pilkington. Carl, we've had a lot of Carl today. He's a bit tired, aren't you? Just a little bit. What happened? Bit you you came back from Edinburgh today as well, didn't you, on the plane? This morning. Yeah. Got an early, an early flight. Yeah. Um, it's just annoying me because there's, there was like people on the plane fighting over, um, where they wanted to sit. Uh, Surely they've got designated seats. Well, they have, but that wasn't good enough for them. They wanted like they wanted to sit next to the friends and that. And it's like, well, you can't because you didn't check in together. So that's that's the way it is. Yeah, done. But the thing is, it's from Edinburgh, forty minutes. Yeah, and I just don't understand this sort of. You can stand for that long, can't you? Well, why, why do you have to sit next to the person anyway, to be honest? I mean, fair enough, if you're going on a long flight, someone to talk to, but for 40 minutes, it really doesn't matter. I never want anyone to talk to. I, I don't want anyone sitting next to me to talk to me. Why? Well, what are they there for? What? I, I don't mean people I go with. I mean, if I'm travelling alone and I sit next to someone, I don't want them to talk to me. Yeah, but... I don't really know. If I was travelling with you, I'd really not want you to talk to me. <laughs> not if you're going to talk like this. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, this is this. Oh, you sound like you're suicidal, mate. There's just a couple of people arguing. It's over, man. Yeah. The plane journey's finished. He's, Why he's, is it still stewing? He's, you he's, up? He's, he paid 160 quid and he's not winning. He doesn't care. He's 165 quid. Let's get it right. <laughs> if we're going to bring it up, if we're going to mention it. <laughs> and it's like Waterford looks back to him. He's, he just. He goes, admit. He said, he said to me, Rick, it's only money. Is, and money is just something you have in case you don't die tomorrow. He's got a great attitude towards money, Steve. It's like, easy come, easy go. So just take a leaf out of Steve the I'm not spending. <laughs> that much merchant and you'll have a happier life. Sorry, I just need to defend myself for a minute. There yeah. are certain instances in life where, you see, you know you're giving me an attitude like that I'm tight. It's not tight. No, it's no, the, no, 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 no,
I want to get value for money at all times. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I d you probably got a lot of cash given to you, maybe it's pocket money when you were a kid. I Every didn't. penny I've ever had is be money I've earned. Yeah. So frankly, yeah. I'm gonna spend it wisely. Like, for instance, you might be, say you're in a party, or so you're at a party, maybe out in a bar with some, someone's birthday, you get talking to a girl, right? Maybe you buy her some drinks, right? You're chatting to her, mm. and then you're chatting away for two hours, and then at the end of the evening she says, oh, da 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 da, -da I gotta go meet my boyfriend now. Right, she's wasted my money and my time there. Yeah. That's two hours wasted and money wasted, right? Now, she should have told me straight away that she had a boyfriend, and I wouldn't have bothered with right. her. I'd have moved on, I'd have what, looked on to her. What it's if like she that thought sort she was just having a chat with another human being? Though, Rick, where you, I'm being deliberately deceived <laughs> so people can extract money from me or interesting <laughs> conversation. Yeah. She knew what I was after, it was yeah. obvious, the drooling yeah. mouth, you yeah. know, the, uh, the beady eyes. And, 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 and yet she was leading me on. And she was a prostitute. And think how he felt about that. I mean, what no, a slap in the face. let's not try and cheapen it with that kind of cheap sexual innuendo, right? She, she had occasionally slept with me for, <laughs> for, for money. <laughs> It you wasn't just, for money, it was for meals. Yeah. It no, but the <laughs> point was, no, do you know what I mean? It's just that sort of attitude generally in my life is like, don't waste my time, you know? Don't waste my time or my money. You're like, life is, sh the clock is ticking as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And, you know, and so just, if, if, if you've got a boyfriend and I come up and I'm chatting you up, just let me know and I'll or move wear a badge. on. I won't bother you. Or yes, wear a badge. please. This, I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel we should, they should definitely introduce some kind of badge. You see, system. the problem is that women without boyfriends will be wearing those badges now and you won't be able to. You know what I mean? You won't be able to say, have you really got a boyfriend? <laughs> no, I just think there should be some kind of sort of, this sort of, there should be an etiquette, there should be an understanding. Yeah. You know, because they know, yeah. I, they can see what I'm after, it's obvious. <laughs> is it obvious, yes, is it? Yes, I make you're it not, very clear. You're not a subtle man. No, I just come over and pant. Do you still, do you still try and attract their attention by throwing small rocks at them? Yeah. As they walk down the, yeah, does that, has that yeah, ever worked? Occasionally. Is it really? You know, the desperate ones or homeless ones. Oh, the homeless but, ones. He once, right, he said to me, he came in, to, uh, uh, work, and he said, uh, I gave a homeless girl uh, a pound, right, because I fancied her. He said, is that wrong? Is that really bad for I me? don't think it is, you see. <laughs> I don't think it is, because it seems to me if she, she was an attractive homeless girl and she deserved some of my money. <laughs> I just like imagine him slowing down. I imagine him like going past loads of trams going, get out of it, get a job. And she goes, you go, ah, <laughs> hello. But I have to say, I did for a moment just pause and think to myself whether I could kind of scoop <laughs> her up in my arms, take her back to my place and kind of turn her life around like my fair lady. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And kind of teach her to speak properly and dress her up in smart clothes and take her out into sort of society. Yeah. I think that's where your first mistake was. She said, listen, love, I'm up for it if I can hose you down. <laughs> that was where you went wrong. <laughs> Smith's Cemetery Gates, great, wasn't it? Always cracking. Off the Queen is Dead, voted best album of all time, I think, in an enemy poll. I don't think it is their Stream best album. Stream is here we come. I agree. By I, far I, the best. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Cracking. Anyway, Carl. Yeah. So people are arguing on the flight. How, how did you enjoy Edinburgh, by the way? Anyway, because I saw you up there briefly for you and um, Nick Frost, your new mates, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. You know, uh, he prefers them to us now. I know, apparently, I could tell that from just talking to him, really. It, it was just, it was the way he was sort of looking at them, everything like that, it was just smiling at Nick Frost, he's, it's his new best chum, you love right. Nick Frost, don't you? Would you have preferred it, right, right if okay. I went to Edinburgh and, and had to sit with some people that I really didn't like? Would no. you have, would you have been happier for me? No, uh, do you know, but right. I, oh, so I had a great time with yeah. Simon and Nick and the, and the nice people. But, what but he kept Nick? going, he kept going, he kept going to, uh, oi, oi, Nick, tell Ricky that story. And he th and Nick and Simon, well, wow, all it was, right, and they're ghost stories, that's, he loves them because they believe in ghosts. Oh. It's not, not just they have great oh, loads of great sense of humour, just because they believe in ghosts. You go and tell him that, he goes, how'd you explain that? I was going, well, I wasn't there. What was that one you told me and it was completely wrong? About the... It was, uh... Oh, yeah, right, it's th th years ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, some... some In olden doc days. Oh, sure. When some ghosts like, roamed the earth. Once upon a time, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some doctor or something who was into, like, the way bodies work, um, they got their head cut off. Uh, who and did? The doctor? Yeah, he was doing a bit of an experiment. And he cut his own head off? He, yeah. Okay. And it was about, um, he said, when my head's in the basket, I'm gonna blink my eyes. Right. Okay, sorry, hang on, let, let him finish. <laughs> and, um... So the doctor has chopped his own head off and, and he's told everyone, I'm gonna blink my eyes to no, prove he's in the basket today. and he goes like, right, I'm gonna blink my eyes about, f you know, as many times as I can to quick count them. And, and they count and he got to like 15 before he, he, he Right. Died. Now this is how Carl told me that. Till, till Nick Frost explained that, Carl told that like, he said, right, well a bloke, right, he had his head cut off, and as it, and it, when his head was in the basket, he went, count how many times I can blink. <laughs> and I went, well that's rubbish. He went, no, and Nick went, well no, he, he actually said when my head's in the basket. I, he went, and Carl went, oh, I said, I said, Carl, do you know the subtle difference? Do you see the subtle difference? I have to say though, guys, I still don't really understand what went on there. 
I really, uh, you've well, both well, lost me. The story is that a bloke who'd been found doing, um, uh, do you know, You mean uh, that Carl just explained it and that was a clear version? Because <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about, Carl. Well, this bloke had his head cut off at, uh, experiments against God. He was a doctor in the, you know, uh, in olden times. Yeah. And when they cut his head off... Um, Why did they cut his head off? Um, because uh, it was, uh, he it was, was crimes against, exactly, he was executed, yeah. And, uh... Uh, he said to his assistant, when my head's in the basket, I'm gonna blink, count how many times I blink and write it down as an experiment, right? Carl told it to me, like, his head was cut off and he went in the basket, and when his head was in the basket, he looked up and said, count how many times I blink. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love the difference in that story. Yeah. yeah. Both rubbish, yeah. but, um, you know, one's, one's Why possible you and one isn't. Anything, you believe anything that you're told except when we tell you the truth. Right, yeah. here's one. Christ. Ghosts and that we got we got talking about. Sure. And Nick uh, Nick said, right. He said, you'll like this one. <laughs> he said, um, my uh, my auntie um, was having loads of problems. Why are you whispering? It. It's not illegal it's like, to talk oh, about ghosts on the radio. No, but, but he's hearing and, this. Um, so um, <laughs> the auntie's in the house and that, and um, furniture's moving about all the time. Oh god. And they were like, no, oh, this is... Oh, Steve, he told me this one. This is such rubbish, mate. No, come I'm on, let's listen. listen. I'm gonna leave it to you. I'm gonna sit back and <laughs> enjoy it. I'm just gonna watch your face, Steve. Right. Sorry, so, so I missed said, the beginning uh, there, Carl. There's an anti right, Basically, age. Nick's auntie. Right. Yeah. Um... In the house, things moving around all the time. Oh, it was man. just annoying every time she tidied up. It was like oh, <laughs> it was just annoying, making a mess. <laughs> it was one part annoying to two parts scary. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, oh, so oh, stuff dear. was stuff was moving around all the time, and yeah. they said, right, rather than right, we need an housekeeper. Yeah. Rather than having the house a mess. Uh, until we sort Stop this out. it! <laughs> I've got the vicar coming round! Stop moving I stuff love around! This. Oh, yeah, go on. They said. That shouldn't be in the pants drawer! <laughs> Let's put all the furniture in one room, right? right. So uh, just have one room, that's a mess. And have all the others <laughs> empty. Because I love the poltergeist can't really. O it can move wardrobes around, but it can't open a door to put it in another room. Yeah. Poltergeist going, oh, I'm just making this room messy. I wish someone opened the door so I could. F go on. Yeah, but. Oh. So, so all this stuff's in this room. So they right? moved all their furniture everything into one room. Everything they put like the drawers in there and everything, and <laughs> it was really uncomfortable because they were all like on top well, of each they other. They sat in the room with all the stuff. Yeah, they had to because that's where the three piece suite was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh God! Right. Oh God! So they sat there, right, all crumpled up on that, but nothing can move because it's so tight. Things, yeah. I think things were trying to move, yeah, but yeah, everything yeah, yeah. was so tight. It's they just boxed like, that report, guys. So, um, so anyway, one night they sat there, like sort of a bit awkward watching the telly and that, and um, they hear some banging, yeah, in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, she goes, oh god, what's that? Oh, he hadn't moved in, I knew the ghost. So, uh, <laughs> to some of the empty rooms. So there's this bang- <laughs> moved some friends and family in. <laughs> there's this banging about going on, no, so this, this, she, this, she gets up, right? Yeah. And what it is, they had the baby in the next room, because there wasn't much room for the cot. Right, so they left the baby with, with the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so, they go into the room where the baby is, <gasps> and the banging- Yeah. Is like, do you know those plastic balls you get that you can chuck around the room and like they go mental? Right. The ones that you chuck once and yeah, they keep yeah. bouncing yeah, yeah, for ages. Yeah, yeah. That was bouncing around the room. Why? What the baby all, had thrown it? It in all the walls and the baby was there, stood in the cot, sort of laughing. Right. And looking at the ball and wherever it looked, the ball went. Yeah. And then th she said, uh, she said, stop doing that. Yeah. And the ball just stopped. Did it? And it. And it Rolled a bit and stopped. Right. So the baby had thrown the ball and it was watching it as it bounced around the room. It wasn't throwing it, it was in control of it. No, the point is, Steve. The baby had been doing it. It would have been the baby all along. The baby had been messing with the furniture. It was so the baby it's a that super had the power. Baby. <laughs> yeah, it's the baby that had the power. Special, ba special baby. It's the baby that had the power. It's the baby power? that had the power. What, the, power the power of telekinesis. Right. They were then trying to convince me that uh, telekinesis was not like all the other stuff that I didn't believe in, but that was a science. Right. Telekinesis was possible. Yes. Yeah. It's not. It's not like. It's not like ghosts and demons and uh, all that sort of. Telekinesis is different. Yeah. That, that's yeah. A science. Um, but, Nick, but Nick's auntie saw it and... I love the fact that you're telling me that someone else's auntie <laughs> saw it. <laughs> so I should be, I should be satisfied with that. Yeah. I, I, I should be satisfied with that. I mean... No. So does she still live in one room with all her possessions? No, I think the uh, baby the grew out of it. Apparently, it, it grew the up. baby grew out of it. it. So it doesn't use its telekinesis powers no. anymore. Well, no, it's no. like in Carrie, in it. She she was upset for a bit, and then she got over it. Okay, I'm yeah. just gonna say one thing, Carl. Um, that was a film. Do you want to play a record or? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get free. 
right, on XFM 104.9. Can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? yeah. Um, uh, I called him out, I was, what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, th he said, right, he said, you don't believe in him, but how do you explain this? Right, I went, go on. He said, uh, I'll tell you as he told me it. He went, um, blog, right, just sitting at home, just sitting at home, doing, you know, watching telly with his, with his cat. And, uh, the phone rings and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire, uh, in your oven okay now? Um, cause your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven. Two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door and there was two sort of people in sort of well, white coats and they, and they kind of said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in my oven and two, I'm not even married. Right? And he said, and they saw the cat and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looks a bit weird at the cat, the cat came out, they were, uh, uh, and, uh, he said, and then he went back it sat down, phone rings, and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? Oh. He went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went. <laughs> that's the end of the I went, story. What? 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 He went, well, how do you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was going to say, <laughs> a year later we got married but she died in an oven fire. <laughs> Right? I thought it was gonna be that. And I went, That's what? people winding him up. Yeah. Or, 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 um, someone did report a fire oven and their name was Johnson and they looked up Johnson they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board or what, <laughs> and they sent around to the wrong person, right? You know, he, he went, he went, yeah. I said, I explained it to him, he went, yeah. Why do they look at the cat funny? <laughs> Oh, man alive, Carl. <laughs> this is really weird, right? I was, um, I was, uh, in my house once, right, and the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right, I opened the door, there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, There's right, some kids there were some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door and there was a bloke goes, you've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what do you think it was weird about that? The, the fact that it was three different people. Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did it was you three different people? Did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen. About a wife that didn't exist <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like um, spirits, do they? <laughs> what? And the other blokes were ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. So right? these are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts who walk the to walk the earth as the ah! undead, just winding oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. That is but lovely. Seriously, and a cat that did not look happy. But seriously, why would ghosts like, wander around just like winding people up? <laughs> oh, maybe something did happen there years ago. Mm. Some fire. Some woman might have died in a house of a fire or something. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it sort of all happened again. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's certainly a mystery. It's, well, really it's a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I What's can't, this I... book you were reading? You were reading a book, which is interesting enough. There was, um, it was the Fatian, the Fatian Times. Oh, Carl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you this, Carl, there is a track that will, uh, that will spook you right out. <laughs> this is Warren Zevon from, uh, what was it, like about 1979, early oh, 80s? Oh, great track. Werewolves of London. Play this, Carl. But don't be scared. <laughs> From 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's all right, that's Great track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. <laughs> as we speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you aren't a People fan. People who hate him would yeah. be interested in knowing <laughs> yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I think Werewolves. Lycanthropy? Is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that? Wa werewolfism. Really? Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy. Because, right. uh, <laughs> cause they've, they've sort of grew up with, uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So. No. You see, two things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So, if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's two. been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have or a lot of people have seen the stories, it's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no, there's kids who have been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, 
<laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> Oh, Steve, this is no, too No, remember, easy. listen, remember that time with the maggot and the head? Yeah. Um, and getting out with bacon and you were like laughing and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this but is the same you, thing. Have you is... seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked? They studied... drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads, people who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is, it's comedy you see, gold. When you, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? Teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. <laughs> they taught us maths. God. Right, tell the story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the, with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me a shame. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on its face yeah. is it, against God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like Get physics. Explained. Physics. Yeah. Yeah. It was going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> okay. Blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw the manhole cover again. <laughs> <laughs> Man alive, Carl. <laughs> I'll explain What's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there! <laughs> oh! If anyone has ever seen that metal cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> what sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything. What would you do to a man I'll cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you stuff? reckon it can Let's send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? Uh, what, of what value is that? <laughs> and I'll tell you what we could do. We could let the put the manhole cover on it and aim it, and then blow the bomb up, and it would <laughs> it would the manhole cover would have someone's eye out. <laughs> fire it. See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. Whatever. Toy bangers to a bomb. See if it's louder. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, listen, Carl. Play another track, and then afterwards, can we probe your views on the the week's news? If you want, we'll do a bit of a white van Carl session. <laughs> Pumpkins. Today. Today. Today is the greatest, because we're back. That's true enough. Right. I hope people, uh, Rick, were listening to that loud uh, in this lovely summer's day. Or, or I mean, I'll call, no, not too loud. Well, don't, 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 don't annoy ears. people. That, yeah. Um, why Rick, Van um, Carl? Yeah, why Van Carl? I mean, uh, for those that don't know, we do this, uh, We ask week. Carl the questions that the Sun asked someone else. That's right, the Sun every day asks, um, some, you know, average Joe, his views on the week's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now, um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Um, Are you aware of this story? No. Was it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals. Yeah. And he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette. Uh, a polo third third in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone hey? smoking a cigarette who's third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. Is it a non-smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but, uh, but if it were, would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yeah. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is, you know, the whole, you know, the, the furore is, he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away in a public place? I don't think it matters, does it? Not a concern for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to smoke? I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I think the trouble with, um, this role model thing with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal or not. Yeah. I just don't think you can impose things that, uh, yeah. because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone so knows that, don't they? Well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl, you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. So, sorry, so yeah. we can throw these questions your way as well <laughs> yeah, if you can't do it. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, what's your concern? What's your worry? Just right. that you might get into them. Sure. It's like you might have them and go, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier and you weren't that very, you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well, don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? 
It's our own fault, is your It depends, doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if, I don't know, something, I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you might Well, most people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic has happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and, and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but, yeah. Just say know. no, I suppose it's the, uh, the, Just the say no, the listen to the, uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there. Well, according yeah. to the sun here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He's thrown to attention Carl. there. I love that's, is that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> 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 right, yeah, man well, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. <laughs> what is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats the entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow the from mammoth? the ice age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then. <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth, a man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh, if we if we'd have never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah, you know, I've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we mean. Things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you stories? slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head and his head was in the basket, and he went, "Count how many times I blink." Is it? I. Is, Carl, uh, is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah, yeah. Do, should but we speak slower? When we say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No, go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do we have to bring, bring back, back prehistoric elephants? These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be offended, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be offended. No, but I'm saying, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, could it? Well, really? but, but, but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong, they thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing uh, from Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, f think about it before you do it, but <laughs> with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna... It's not a concern for you. Would oh. you go along to see him? Would you be interested in that? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue, Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sit in, like, Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I want to cruise around and have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, um, my clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. Just, so it's just for a second. What's, what, what's as, the, as the words man, moth, came into your head. How excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face uh, did he have? Was, uh, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what, what was his face? What did it look like? <laughs> just, he just was like a bit like... A bit, bit shocked. Perplexed, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, like so, it was like he'd been he'd been he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth without yeah. his, his consent. And when he was asleep, no yeah, he'd woken up. He just he just went in for to have a goiter removed, yeah. and they said we've replaced your with goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah, just is that all right, Mr. Jenkins? So sorry. he had the head of a, a little was it a little boy or a man? Little man, right? Okay, and he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you if you uh, went into hospital and, and they'd done something, uh, what, what's the worst thing they do? Right? What would you rather have done? Do you right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it? In fights and stuff. And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play well, The lobster claws would also be quite handy there. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so, first show back. Yeah, it's not bad. It's great to be I'm back. I'm just thinking about that money, Rick, to be honest. I know, still playing on my must, mind. I know, yeah. Could we maybe get like a sort of telethon type thing going or a little charity? Thing, just sort of help me pay you. You can't really ask people to send you money, really? it's technically begging. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is Unless you're a are, you, are, are you a registered charity? <laughs> um, I suppose not, not really. We could probably get you status. 
Yeah. But could I promise, I mean, could I pretend to give them something in return? I mean, am I allowed to sell things on the radio? Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. So Although you probably, you probably get in trouble with uh, the authority if you're, you're using it to sort of like, to your own, okay, not like everyone else doesn't. No, exactly. Yeah. Free lunches and yeah. sponsorship and yeah, God knows yeah, what, yeah. you know what I mean? The, yeah. Probably the people that work here, small fry, the yeah. scum. Exactly, the nobodies, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 165 quid is quite, it's quite a lot of money, so I mean, if you want to contribute anything, Rick, as I said before, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I would if, it, if I felt any responsibility. Right. Or, yeah, or, or sure, cared. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got there too early, which is annoying. <laughs> um, what we should have done, really, was, uh, get you your plane and come back, cos I'd have had time. Do you know, I, I was gonna mention <laughs> it at the time, but I didn't want to, cos I knew the answer would be no. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Carl. Oh, I, 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 really, I've had a great time. I've forgotten, I've forgotten how good it was just to have a normal con- I say normal, just to have a conversation with you. Are you looking forward to this? You're, he's really down today, isn't he? He's down, man, isn't he? Just time. But it's still. interesting, because I said to him, I said to him, did you enjoy Edinburgh? He spent this, the week up in Edinburgh, yeah. obviously, and uh, he said, yeah, well, he loved it up there, he's been mm. partying every night, and he actually enjoyed it, and I've never, I've never met him when he's actually enjoyed anything before. He's never enjoyed anything, as far as I know, and it's I'm depressed that we weren't involved. It's, pa it's, it's paper round. He loved the paper round, and this Best. is the first time yeah, he was talking about that the other day as well, but I said, to him, I, I, that's what he really thinks that that paper round he had when he was 14 was the best job he'd ever had. Yeah. He still yeah. thinks it's the best job, because he was, own, he said he was his own boss. Well, no, you weren't. <laughs> yeah. He went, well, I'll get on my bike and think. And he said, I bet if I phoned those people who I delivered the papers to, they'd say it was the best delivery they've ever had. He said, in fact, I bet a lot of them have chucked in the delivery because it went downhill. This is all, yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. thinking this as yeah. he went along. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Imagine phoning someone up and saying, you don't remember me, but I used to deliver your paper ten years ago. Was it the best <laughs> delivery service you've ever had? <laughs> no, but if I said I delivered it ten years ago, um, you used to, if you got up at like six in the morning, it was there for you. Yeah. There's no other paper boy. Who could guarantee that they'd have that paper when they got Carl, out of if bed. you could earn enough money, would you do a paper round again? If, you, if that was your job, but we, you were being paid enough to make a living from it, would, would that, is that something you think about? Uh, do you think you'd enjoy it as much nowadays? Yeah, I reckon I would, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, listen to some music. Sure. Uh, a thousand pound a week, would you do the best yeah, at- Yeah, yeah. Would you really? Yeah. Is would, there anyone out there who is willing to test that? Is there anyone who's willing to pay Carl Right, a grand. A sum of a grand yeah. to take a week off work and deliver papers just for that week. All day though, it's all day. No, 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 no. I'll what? get up and the, the customers will have their paper. Yeah, but can I say what street it is? No, because uh, no, no, it's the M25. <laughs> See, you are being paid a thousand pounds. Yeah, thousand pounds. You've got to deliver to the M25. I'll tell you what. Let's 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 take the mood down a little bit and play one of the most beautiful songs I've been looking forward to getting. I just play this. To be honest, it's Jimmy Webb's uh, version of Galveston. Galveston, there by the brilliant Jimmy Webb. Uh -huh. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? He wrote it. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant Jimmy Webb, who wrote it? Yeah. It was all one sentence. Yes. Did I confuse you? Again, yeah. With my uh, speech pattern. It's just, just using the English language is always helpful, really. But compared to Carl, I'm, I'm Oscar Wilde, aren't <laughs> I? I suppose so. <laughs> Be afraid. Electric soft train on XFM 104.9. How long to go on our, uh, on our ret a triumphant return? I think, uh, oh, I think the pace would be saying, Steve. Yes, yes. Um, Carl, um, I've I met Carl a couple of times in our, our sabbatical, and, uh, he, uh, said to me once, he said, um, oysters. So I said, have you ever tried oysters? I, I, I don't like them. And I went, uh, he said, oh, it's just, just a thing about swallowing them whole, you know. He went, well, the reason you have to do that is just they're, they're fatally poisonous. <laughs> And if you bite into them, they kill you. And I went, well, of course they don't. He went, yeah. I went, well, of, co of course they wouldn't. <laughs> what if you chewed on it? He said, no. I said, well, so you swallow them whole and they're not poisonous. He went, yeah, ah, see. He said, so, he said, when you swallow heroin in a, in a Johnny, he says, that doesn't kill you, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Oh. And then, uh, about a week later, he went, I was wrong about them. <laughs> you were? Yeah, I went, well, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you say? It's if you eat them and then you have some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> they they turn deadly when when whiskey comes into contact with them. Yeah, when when uh, when they've had a drink. <laughs> drink, they get a bit rowdy in your stomach. They right. start fighting. They can yeah, cause get Larry. So, 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 what, so what are you saying now? Are you saying you don't believe that? Am I saying what? Are you saying you don't believe that? He that? thinks he's got us here. He thinks he's got us here. Yeah, I don't believe that if you eat an oyster, then drink some whiskey, you die. 
you might not die straight away, but you won't feel Eventually, 50 years time. If you've got, you've got to keep on drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, 50, for the day. 50 or 60 years later, he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oyster and a bottle of whiskey, mate. Oh. <laughs> then, out of nowhere, 40 years Wh later. Where does this information come from, Carl? If, if some doctor called up now. Yeah. And put you right, would you believe him? If it wasn't Dr. Fox. Yeah. <laughs> what about the airy, airy lads? Growing up with the werewolves and that. They didn't grow up they with werewolves. werewolves. Grow up with werewolves. You've confused they're about three just different the genetic stories, mutation where the, you know they were born with a uh, very very astute. There were a couple of kids. Yes, they didn't we know. grow up with wolves. And you can't kill them with a silver bullet. I mean. You're confusing two things. There aren't were you? some kids who were very, very hairy. Yes, yeah. they're in folklore. There were some kids who grew up with wolves. Yes, I don't think the two are connected. Yeah. Mm, There's yeah. no such thing as werewolves, Carl. <laughs> you, you believe me? I saw a documentary on it on the History Channel. You'd have loved it. You, you, you grew the up with a man of werewolves. You know, you don't flap around, do you, and steal people's jewellery? Yeah. What was the thing you told me about snails? Uh, have you ever had any? Um, <laughs> Any post that that looks like it's been opened? Occasionally, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what it is? It's not your postman having a a sneaky look. A sneaky look. <laughs> problem is, right? Uh, slugs. <laughs> the problem, is slugs. Slugs at <laughs> night. They like nipping about and that, and it gets a bit cold. And in London, like in the country, they go into the grass, don't they? Right. But in London, it's like, oh, what can we do? <laughs> and, um, they go in letter boxes. Right? Slugs go in letter Get boxes. Get in letter bo boxes, it's nice and warm in there, uh, dry and what have you. And, um... <laughs> These are homeless slugs, aren't they? The ones that have lost their shell. When they're in there, they only found out that they love glue. <laughs> they and love they've, glue? they've been eating, uh, eating the glue off the stamps. Right. And, um, <laughs> people have been getting charged for posts because it hasn't had stamps on it. It's like, well, they put a stamp on it. Yeah. It's like it's, slugs have been eating it. <laughs> sure. And they also eat the glue that's on the actual envelope shutter. And it's a real popular problem, this, that, uh, <laughs> letters are being lost and opened and all that stuff. Yeah. Slugs. I like, are slugs like stealing postal orders and things and catching them in and stuff? <laughs> yeah, again, you know, if there's a doctor, if there's a postman. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, well, with us, two expert witnesses, a doctor and a postman. So, uh, <laughs> so postage is a real problem. Um, so, uh, is, when we see, when we see a, a slug's trail, or a snail's trail... It's glue. That's the glue they've stolen, is it? That's, they just, that's a little... I'm we, not, I'm not gonna say yes to that, that I'm not follow, sure. But we could follow that trail and, and find the, them, and they'd have a big, sort of... <laughs> big uh, Yeah, our stamps and... Yeah, yeah, there they are. Like, birthday cards for our Yeah, stuff. but two pound notes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Slugs. Wow. So, oysters and whiskey kill you, and slugs. Be very careful. If you're going to go out this evening, you're thinking of having a whiskey, maybe some oysters, be very, very careful. Yeah, and Likewise, if you are going to post a letter, please, please, please do not use please. tasty glue. <laughs>to form there, Oasis, and little by little, this is XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, who are you? Uh, my name's Steve Merchant, good to see you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, with us, uh, the producer in the studio is a Carl Pilton, and he'll be doing the buttons. <laughs> yeah. You made a good effort there, but, uh, <laughs> once again, <laughs> <Go on board. laughs> words are your enemy, Rick, <laughs> and they defeated you once again. <laughs> Yes, run out of steam oh, with the sentences. Every week I think, well, I'm really gonna make an yeah. effort now. I'm gonna, I've, I've chosen some records. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's as far as yeah. it goes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should write out what you're gonna say at the top of the show. <laughs> write that out. <laughs> Get a nice no, big crayon. Be, I like to keep a little bit of, you know. A little bit of something, a little bit of spark, yeah. a little bit of liveliness to it. Yeah, sure. yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. How yeah. are you? Good to, good to good, see you. Yeah, it's great. It's great to, uh, <laughs> It's uh, great to be out of <laughs> uh, the house <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, just, um, I was gonna say, because we've been doing this, uh, for a long time now, with a little break, um, but XFM are bringing new listeners all the time. I've heard four or five a week. Really? Yeah. New wow, listeners tune in alive. to XFM. One Radio four point nine. Beware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, we might take it for granted the people that know who we are, know who you are, know who Carl is. Sure. Um, Oh, now, if, if, if you, you know, if you're a regular, then you know exactly who we are. But, um, for those of you who don't, uh, I say, I'm, I'm Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais, a uh, BAFTA award-winning actor and, yeah, uh, yeah. and writer. Steve Merchant, um, all, all those. A friend of yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, this is the important thing, Carl Pilkington. Absolutely. Our, um, produ I say producer, he was the bloke who was lumbered with a job. When I said, listen, I said, I used to run the desk in the old days, when I, was like, I used to press the buttons and run the desk and everything, and now I said, listen, I've been on the telly. I do not press my own buttons. 
and Carl said, well, I don't really work weekends, and they went, well, you do if you want to keep your job. Absolutely. And we were lumbered with him. And then we discovered that he's not just a, a little, like a little dork, a little manky sort of idiot. Sure, he's sure. got He's got a nice shirt. He's got, you know what I mean? He's got something else. Absolutely. He's got a certain, another dimension, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he, he started having a little chat and we discovered that he had him. quite a lot to say. Mm. Well, I, I think you're actually right. And I think, um, I was wondering maybe we, we should maybe play another tune. But after that, I just think we should re familiarise our radio audience with yeah. Carl and any new listeners. Just get, let, you know, somehow kind of let them get to know the real Carl again. Well, if you are new, you'll, you'll find that we like some uh, old songs, some new songs, some oh, yeah. chit chat. Uh, we get serious sometimes. There's oh, some yeah. tears and some laughter. Yeah. We kicked off with Oasis new one, little by little. We're gonna go back <laughs> in time now to Iggy Pop and his stooges with I'm Bored. <laughs> Iggy Pop on board on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant here. Isn't yeah, you? little Carl Pilkington. Mm. Well, w to reintroduce or introduce people for the first time to Carl, um, I think we should have a... Yeah, uh, maybe sort of a kind of a quick Q&A, Carl, and we don't need sort of lengthy answers from you, we don't need lots of detail. Um, yeah. you know, it can be, uh, just a couple of sentences. Just to get to a answer each question. who you are. Yeah, so right. firstly, uh, name obviously Carl Pilkington. Age, Carl? Uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be 30 next month. Really? This month. No, next, wh where are we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, think we need to ask I any more questions. I think we've done it. That's I it. I think we've Welcome done it. Welcome to the world of Carl Pilkington. <laughs> yeah, I think. Oh, I thought it would take three or four I questions. I thought it was going to be at least. To really yeah. explain that was, that what was the Carl first was question. about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Absolutely God! Incredible. But, well, um, but you oh. know, I, we can't really leave it there because, um, no. because we, uh, we haven't uh, got enough else to do to fill yeah. up the two hours. So, um, no. let's, let's pursue this line of inquiry. Yeah. Uh, so, um, age, what was the age, Carl, in a couple well, of months? When were you born? I'll be, uh, 72. Right, what month, what day? I'm on the cusp. <laughs> uh, you're the cusp of a day. Well, um, 23rd of September. Okay. 72. So anyway, okay, right, good. And uh, you were talking there about, um, obviously a star sign where you're on the cusp. Yeah. You believe in that, do you? No. Nope. You don't believe in star signs? No, not really. But you do believe in ghosts, I understand. No, because Paranormal. the star sign- Yeah, but the star Ten. sign thing, you've got how many, how many different star signs, are they? Twelve, innit? Right, and then you've got, like, loads of people. Yeah. So you do the math. So they're saying that, you know, there's only 12 different sorts of people in the world. Exactly. That's yes. exactly right. It's, it's made up, it's made up nonsense, it's non-science. It's pseudoscience. It's, yes. It's, 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 it's hairy man and, um, dyed hair woman science. Yes. Mm. Isn't it? All right. Yeah. Anyway, back to, uh, you, Carl. Where were you born? In, uh, in Manchester. Okay. What, uh, GCSE results did you get? <coughs> I got, uh... Was that an E? You got an E, you in, got history. An e in history. And how, how did, did you, you find out about that information? You found out because you thought you you didn't you couldn't remember what you got. You didn't turn up, and you thought you'd done about three, one of which uh, wasn't history. And you, actually, you did art. Yeah, you didn't. I'm telling you, you didn't because we checked. Yeah. You did one. You turned up for history. You did history. You got an no, E in I history. I definitely did art. I what? made a little clay man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to register for O levels. You don't just do it and then phone up and say, "I was that." Yeah. And they go, I'm we sending don't. you a clay man. <laughs> <what> you <think. laughs> yeah, Send me yeah. a grade. Yeah, there's all things. There's forms to fill out and yeah. things like that, Carl. Anyway, yeah. go anyway. on. Um, who was your closest childhood friend? Closest? At what age? Well, when you were young, when you were. Oh, I remember this. It's a fella. Um, so there's, is there's, it someone making? Isn't there's, it? There's. Well, he wasn't really a close mate. Darren Buckley was me. Darren Buckley. Yeah, he, he was me. Tell us briefly about Darren. I forgot about Darren. He's the one who. Um, <laughs> All the all the girls liked him. He Did had, they? Uh, he had permed hair. He used to <laughs> have his hair like a footballer. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Were you jealous of him? His dad was a copper. Did you hang around with Darren like in the hope of getting maybe his kind of cast-offs? Nah. I, I, it's, it's weird with me, and I, I wasn't that bothered about having loads of mates and that. I sort of sure. I had lots of mates, but I could do without them. You had a magpie, yeah. didn't you? I was, happy, didn't I was you? happy playing with me magpie. Yeah. And what happened to him? It uh, flew away. Yeah. But I wasn't bothered because it was giving me grief towards the end, wasn't it? It was, <laughs> it was popping me, me grief the tyres and that. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> flying down, pecking me head. Sure. Now you went to school with a number of different interesting people. Uh, some of whom two were of which, uh, freaks. I understand, uh, had big heads and webbed toes. Is that right? Yet yeah, they were not related to each other and they weren't friends with each other. Why weren't they friends with each other? <laughs> because that'd be obvious. <laughs> Did they, did they wear shoes or did they walk around in their, in their webbed, uh, Were they good at feet? swimming? Were they good at swimming? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't think they ever ever went swimming. Did they ever talk? Did they, did they ever look over at each other and think, "Yeah, we uh, should hang out more." <laughs> I told you, uh, yeah. something in the week as well, there was another cool. lad at school, had a pigeon chest. <laughs> he had a what? Can we come back to this? He had a pigeon I chest. I think we should play a record, Carl, because we- I think we've hooked them now. Yeah. I think- I think- There's no one switching off now, Rick. No, play a record. <laughs> Blair, coffee and TV. Carl, uh, I said it's not the best Blair song when, when it was playing, you know, I'm not, I don't want to diss it, but, you know, it's not the best one. I mean, that's- Absolutely that's not. fact. Sure. You know. Yeah. Carl went, like the video though, that little milk carton. Yeah. A bit sad, it's tragic, isn't it? <laughs> he went, in the, this is all to himself, I'm not even joined in. <laughs> and then he went, yeah, but it's alright at the end. He goes to heaven, he finds a little girl milk carton. Just lives out a little thing and is, is that like you on your paper round that little milk carton walking around like that? I imagine you, oh, people don't know about it, if you just tuned in, Carl had a paper round. It's his favourite job ever. And he maintains it's the best job he's ever had, isn't it, Carl? Wait. <laughs> Go on. I don't know what's so weird about that. It's a paper round. Yeah, but look, look, look forget it's not all that. Fulfilling look jobs. at look at the way it works, right? You you get it out of the way at the start of the day, so you got the rest of the day to yourself. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just it's the same as signing on. Your own your own boss. You know. Same as signing on. Well, you're not your own boss. The guy, yeah. the news agent's your <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, you, that's you, great. You, you've proven me wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, not really. Would that stand up in court? Well, you were found with the dagger. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Was I? Okay, uh, what, when are we, uh, when are we playing the new game? Oh, Carl's got a new game. Carl's oh, very excited. Oh, just, just, we were just talking about something before. Yeah, the, well, the freaks used to go. You, you had uh, people with big heads, two web feet, didn't hang around each other. That would be too obvious. Um, you had a fellow with a pigeon chest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the story with the pigeon chest? Don't know. It happened. <laughs> it was like it, it looked like somebody sort of hit him on the back with a big hammer, <laughs> and it had come out of the front. Yeah, and I've never seen it since. Could that have been the answer? Well, why is why yeah, he had it? Why had it? Possibly, I suppose, in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Don't know, never asked him. It's just come back to haunt you, has it, the pigeon chest? No, it's just that, uh, you know, when you when you mention about kids at school, I forgot all about him. Mm. You're talking about the kids with the web feet and the big heads. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I forgot about the little old, uh, pigeon, chest, pigeon boy. Yeah, pigeon boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I, I, are you, I, I'm a big fan of that TV show, it's on digital TV, a lot of people won't have it, but, uh, Inside the Actors Studio with James yeah. Lipton. Yeah. And he's, he interviews lots of big Hollywood stars and he always asks them these same questions at the end. Can I just run a few of them past you? Go on. Okay. So, um, if you could do any other profession other than the one you do now, what profession would you do? Uh, can you just change that to apart from a paper round? Apart from a paper round. Oh. Can you do any other heck? profession, Carl? Um, and it doesn't matter about like. It doesn't matter if you've got the skills or anything, I in an ideal world, if you had the ability. Well, I, I think I'm about to buy somewhere, so I reckon something, you know, using, using tools and like doing a bit of plumbing and that. So a plumber? Well, sort of an all rounder. Right, right. A, a, handy, handy a handyman. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, you don't get paid that much, but it's useful, isn't it? So but you'd useful. get your own show, couldn't you, with Carol Smiley eventually? Well, well, all that, but the money that you don't make, you save by not having to pay someone else to do the chores. Do right, you know I, mean? I, I don't know what that sentence meant. <laughs> right, right. No. A plumber, how much, how much is the average plumber on? The money you don't make, <laughs> you save on not getting someone else to do it. <laughs> no, just think of that. No, look, break that sentence down. Are there any- Sorry, Rick, sorry, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. people who live in glass Carol. houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's just go back to Lipton quickly. We've got a couple to get through here. Sorry, so, yeah, um, your, 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 your favourite noise or sound? Uh, Favourite sound or noise? Oh, Is it me? No. It's not uh, me? Hang on a minute. It's not me! <laughs> Are you sure it's not me, Carl? I like, I like Elvis. Noise. Elvis. Uh, Elvis. In the, in the ghetto. The sound of Elvis. Uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. And your least favourite noise or sound? I, d I don't think it should really be records and music. It's noises. Things that are, you hear. Uh, at home or whatever. Maybe like a sound of a- The least favourite noise. Least favourite. The sound of- Probably like uh- sound of ghosts. Fire engines and that. <laughs> right. That's- that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Except if your house was on fire, presumably. <laughs> I think it's a bit unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> you think uh, they're just doing it to wind people up? I live on like a busy street and it's happening all the time and it's, yeah. it is like, just sort of have a blast of it and people will hear it. You sure. don't have to keep it going. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. sure. So that, that is, yeah, okay. pretty annoying. And, um, uh, if heaven exists, Carl, when you get to the pearly gates, what would you like God to say to you as he welcomes you into heaven? What would you like God to say to you? Uh, who asks these? 
What, what shows this? It's a program where um, celebrities are interviewed by a guy, uh, an American interviewer, and he always asks these questions at the very end. What would I say to God? What no, would you say what, to God what, when, if, if you believed in heaven and if heaven exists, when you eventually go up to heaven and you're welcomed in through uh, the gates in by your God? Parker, what, in your dusty t shirt and yeah. your. What do you want God to say to you as he welcomes you in? Say, uh, you know, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, just be, just be friendly. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, nice stuff. Um, it's a kind of Scottish supergroup. Lots of different artists from uh, Scottish Sebastian, bands. Ben Sebastian. Be Is uh, it any singer from them? Uh, it may well be, yeah, on that particular track. Different people, Mull Historical Society, Idlewild, Teenage Fan Club, different people from all those bands. Get together with a guy called Sir Gary Lightbody from Snow Patrol and he uh, writes And all that on XFM 104.9, Steve. Absolutely. Uh, let me just name that track. That track was Grand Parade from their current album, uh, Son of Evil Reindeer. <laughs> Feeder. Come back around on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Uh, but who are you? <laughs> oh, thanks for asking, Rick. Steve Merchant. Uh, with us, Carl Pilgerton. Well, Carl, um, now I know I shouldn't, uh, but I met Carl in the week again. I, I told you you shouldn't do I this. Know. You know, you but then when the he weekend. starts, he starts saying things like, oh, is this loud with the people? I go, no, save it, save it. And we just sit there and I'm scared to talk in case he comes up. But, um, you did tell me a couple of little things, didn't you? True stories that, you know, that, that I mean, I enjoy. Could you tell, um, Steve about the doctor? Right. Oh God. Um. What's what, where, is this something that happened to a friend of yours or is this uh? No, no, I read about it. You read about it? Okay. Um, there's this little lad, right? <laughs> okay. First of all, it's it's years ago, right? When right, they didn't have times. they didn't have decent doctors in like every town and that. Yeah. And uh, this little kid is dead ill, right? Yeah. And the local doctor. <laughs> Well, there's a phone call involved, so I don't yeah, really well, get the impression it. that it's like medieval, medieval times. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. But I, I didn't say that, I just said it's years ago. Go on so on. this kid's ill, right? Yeah. And he's, uh, he's lying in the bed and uh, he's, he's all like, all going funny colour and that. Yeah. And, uh, and his mum says, I'm gonna get the local doctor around. The local doctor comes around and uh, he says, oh, so I don't know, I don't know what's up with him. He said, um, to leave it with me. Leave <laughs> 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 it with me. He well, said, the uh, said that. I'll have a, yeah. He said I'll um, I'll, I'll phone up uh, a top doctor. Okay. Who was in America or somewhere like that. Yeah. And uh, so he goes to the phone in his office and he calls America and because it's years ago the phone line isn't that good. It's all crackly and that. Right. Yeah. So he's talking to the doctor and he's saying I've got this kid. He's a funny colour and. Uh, you know, he's it, really weak and that. I don't yeah. know what's He's not him. giving him much to go on. <laughs> right? Sure. So, uh, so the American doctor, right? Yeah. He goes, yeah, what you wanna do? And it's all breaking up, right? <laughs> he goes, what you gotta do? You gotta, uh, <laughs> it's all breaking up. You gotta give him some, uh, parrot's blood, right? Some parrot's blood? Well, that's what he thought he said, but the line was really bad. Yeah. He meant parents' blood, but he, he heard that he said parrots' blood. He oh said, "Right, I'll, I'll I'll do that. Leave I, it with I me." I can see where this is going. He goes he goes to uh, you know a pet shop. Yeah. <laughs> he says, "Give us like half a dozen parrots." Sure. Takes them round to the kid's house. Takes the blood from the parrots. Puts it into the kid. Kid's fine. <laughs> The kid's fine. <laughs> I've it, never. It worked. <laughs> such a load of shite <laughs> in my life. I've never heard <laughs> such twaddle, such <laughs> just made up, enhanced, exaggerated. <laughs> Oh, in what my a life. load of old rubbish, Carl. I mean, when he told me this, he said, the doctor said, what do I do? And the doctor on the other end said, give him some blood. And the doctor went, where do I get blood from? <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, wait, you, I just need to- I give, just need Where to do I get blood from? From his- give him some parents' blood. Give him some parents' blood. <laughs> give him some parents' some, some parents' blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But hang on, I just need to know where you Sorry, read this. Carl. Where was this? Where did you I read this? I stitched you up. You know when he said, he said, so do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. He went, do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. <laughs> Carl. But where did was you read it? That, that was on the internet. <laughs> What, where about is illnesses. it on the internet? Where, I'm what, always what looking at stuff. I was looking at stuff this morning because of, um, because <laughs> of Yora Geller last night. <laughs> <laughs> eating, uh, eating all that funny food and that. And also, uh, they all got a bit scared last night, didn't they, with a, with a snake. Hmm. I didn't see that. Is this, um, I'm a celebrity getting me out of here? Yeah, yeah, he got all worried about a snake getting on the, uh, 
sort of wandering about in between the sleeping bags and stuff. Yeah. And, um, they were all scared, and it is so Leave easy. it with me! Sorry, the doctor says, leave it with me. Leave it with me. Yeah! Ah, uh, leave it with me! Well, they were all scared, because there's a snake, and it's so easy to find stuff out. Before they- before they- where are they? Where is this jungle? <laughs> Australia, right. I think. Right, before they went, give it half an hour on the internet, <laughs> I found out with snakes, you don't need to worry, okay. right? Um, they're deaf, they haven't right. got any ears. Right. So as long as you, you're really quiet, Creep around, they'll yeah. probably leave you alone. Yep. And also they don't have eyelids. Uh-huh. Um, so they were suggesting if one's coming towards you, just, like, kick sand in its eyes. Because <laughs> yeah. it can't blink and it leaves it a bit, like, annoyed yeah. and it wanders off. But they didn't do any research before they went. Yeah. And that's- uh, your, your, I think your knowledge would hold you in good stead. I don't think you need to know any more than you know. Um, well we're gonna come back to that cause he also explained to me where, um, uh, a saying comes from that I want to, you to be part of. But, um, Oh, and also we should mention as well, Carl, you've come up with a, a competition, is this right? Brilliant competition. You, have you, have he you thinks this up? He thinks this can go to television. Is this an idea you've come up with? Yeah. Carl, I'm so looking forward to so, it. So, uh, I mean, I'm- I'm looking forward to it. Um, continuing, uh, our exposure of myths and- and legends of Rockfall Tale, we exposed that myth that some maybe older rockers have- have had it and they've gotten a- they- they were never any good and yeah. the kids today- oh, I don't want to hear that. People like Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart is a great artist. This, uh- He's a slightly laughable man, but a great artist. Let's go back to when it was- when it was rocking. When he cut the mustard. Yeah. <laughs> Rod Stewart, you wear it well. Great tune. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. This doctor, I mean, we <laughs> should find out who he is, really, and if he's still practicing, because it- it worries me a little bit that he, you know, mm. he did that. Also, I mean, he thinks he's got away with it, but how could he be sure those parrots wouldn't talk? True. True. Do you know yeah, what I mean? There yeah, were six yeah. of them, they probably got together and they pro they probably put it on the internet. I mean, it- I, I feel that that story, Carl, it, it asks more questions than it answers. <laughs> yeah, really. Like most of your stories. Yeah, that's the to problem. I always feel them. I always feel like I need a little bit more information. Like, yeah. did the parrot boy continue to live? <laughs> yeah, you know, to a ripe old age, or did he yeah. die weeks later after this charlatan doctor who was yeah. going around, you know, spurious? Did he break heart. his nose trying to crack a big nut? Mm. No, I, th I think he's. Uh... He was alright, he, he lived to a- See, I'd have shouted- if I was that doctor, I'd have shouted that down the phone. <laughs> Are you sure you said parrot's blood? Yeah. You Parrot sure it was parrot's no, blood? Listen, I- I mean, uh, you know, I'm not the best doctor in the world, but did you- did you say parrot's blood? <laughs> Yeah, but what you're forgetting is you're going back to the time where, like, they used leeches to do, like- No, 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 we're going back to the late 70s if there's a phone call to America direct. <laughs> Come on, Carl, they weren't calling America, like, in the medieval times or- or in the Victorian age. Come on, think about it, Carl. Yeah. You know, it's, this has got to be, like, the- the, like, you know, 30s or 40s, <laughs> the earliest. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> I'm intrigued to know where this- I think there's someone on the- on the web who's just putting information on there to lead you astray. Yeah. I don't- cause you're the only person who finds this stuff. Other people are using this to write what thesis. What were you looking at that then? What were you- what were you I'm looking- always, I always look at f weird stuff. What were you yeah. looking for? But what do you type in the search engine to find what parrot you, what, blood stories? What were you looking for? There's this woman with a weird head. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you looking for that? What were you doing? Just cause I, I'd heard about it. I'd heard, like, someone talking about it on another station. Right. right. About this woman with a- with a funny head. Right. <laughs> I love the fact- I love the fact you're intrigued with these things. You go in the basement of Waterstones or Dylan's or somewhere and there's these- there's these medical books that you're loving, mate. Yeah, well, this is free on the internet, isn't it? It's all there. Yeah. So what do you typed in? Weird head woman or? <laughs> I think it's weird. Lady with head. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird, weird people or something I put in. Sure. Yeah. Did you, did you come up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 7,000 uh, hits, Carl Pilkington. Well, it's all there, innit? It's interesting. The one that I was telling you before about, um, the what's the name? The, the lost letter. The lost letter? What's the lost, this? uh, lost postcard that's, uh, just turned up. Some yeah. woman, uh, sent a postcard years and years ago to- to a niece or something, right? Yeah. And- and her niece was like three years old, sure. back then. And just now, like, I think like, yesterday or the day before, it turned up- the postcard turned up 74 years late. <laughs> 74 years late? It took 74 years. And that years. three-year-old girl's been living in the same house that whole time? <laughs> well, that- yeah. Sure. <laughs> 
There's no way. You see what I mean? But there's always a question you can ask <laughs> to just scratch the credibility of these stories. Yeah. There's always. It's like the apocryphal tale. Was this the is slugs? It, was this those slugs from last week? Yeah, they're they holding back because they're slow. Because the postman slug is useless. His round takes him seventy-four years. And then he's got to go back to the beginning. He's got seventy-four years, and they can't carry the bag. But that's where they go. That's why they turn to glue. That's why they turn to glue. Oh. It's pitiful. It is pitiful. So you, so you don't believe that someone sent a postcard years ago <coughs> and somehow it's been stuck in the bottom of a post bag or something and it's only just- Stuck in the bottom of a post bag? Yeah. That means that there's like an, a 95 year old postman who's still yeah. wandering around. Did, 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 you, did you have to pay like the, the difference and the charges? Uh, Cause presumably th it was- It a, wouldn't have had Queen Elizabeth's uh, It was, it was a penny wrong, black, it? presumably, was it? Yeah. <laughs> what would be on the stamp? <laughs> it would have been invalid, surely. <laughs> I don't know. See, these are the questions no, you should no, ask no, no, yourself. Because no, no. if it's the postman's fault, the post the postman. office can't turn out. He was at the time himself, wasn't he? He was dead. No, he is dead. Yeah, he'll yeah. be well and truly dead now. Yeah. But the fact is that the post office made an error, <laughs> right? They lost this letter. Sure. Mm. It's only just turned up. They can't turn around and say, sorry about this. I hope it isn't urgent. Um, <laughs> it, it, He's turned up 74 years late, and by the way, you owe us 25 pence. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. do that, would no, they? No, that's so, true, that's true. So that's true. You You're asking questions, AC. That's, that's true, you see. So, t um, you're interested in that where sayings come from as well, aren't you? Because yeah. you, you told me one of the week, what that, I don't know if Steve's aware of that. Do you want to tell Steve this one? What's this a saying? Can we do this quiz? D Let's do, do this We'll first. do the quiz later. I know you're excited about the quiz. Let's do that later, but what's this saying? Right. Uh, what is the saying? Chucking a baby out with the bathwater? Yeah. Have you, know you that? Heard that, have you heard that phrase? Uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, yeah. 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 Right, wh wh how would you use that? Well, um, how would I use that? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I suppose if you've, maybe you've been discussing something, you've come up with some plans, but you're slightly worried and, um, you know, you might abandon the whole plan, whereas there might be some ideas in there which are still worth retaining. Exactly. So you don't want to ba throw the baby out with the, the bathwater. Bath there might right. be something you can just change yeah. and you don't want to, yeah. yeah. A similar, you know, there might be a few ideas you can salvage from an, an otherwise worthless one. Well, the saying, right, comes from, like, years ago again. Mm -hmm. And um pre or post phone. <laughs> and uh <laughs> ages and ages ago when like you know, the bloke worked in the house, you know, he was like the coal man. And then you have like <laughs> No way, it's important. Then then like the mum is like uh you know, she stays at home making the dinner, looking after the kids. Yep. yep. And uh and you've got like the little kid who's just growing up, just messing about and stuff. So what happens is back then they didn't have like fresh flowing warm water every day. Mm. So all they could do, they could only afford to have like um, one one full big bath of fresh water. So they'd fill up the bath, right? And then the dad would come home and he'd say, "Oh, I've had a right, you know, I had a tough day at work and that down the pit." And uh, his wife would say, "It's all right, I'm putting the dinner on. You're gonna have a nice warm bath." So because yeah. he because he gets the bath first. Because he, he gets the bath first because he's the grafter and he's right? covered in coal. He's covered yeah. in coal, so the water's like minging by the time he's finished. Yeah. Right. And then the wife says, "Oh, after all my uh, cleaning the house and doing the cooking, I'm a bit sweaty now." She's covered in dust yeah. and grime. She's next one. I'll, I'll have a bath. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. At the end of the line, there's a little baby. Yeah, yeah. It's been playing out all day. Also got like little uh, little grubby knees and stuff. Needs to have a bath. <laughs> yeah. He goes in the bath. Right, but because the water is so dirty, sure, they go and empty the water out of the window. Can't see the baby in it. <laughs> Chucking the baby out with the bath water. That's how. It, that's where it comes from. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Steve. Because <laughs> I heard this. I just. I'm just. I'm just. What do you think, Steve? Steve. So. <laughs> so firstly, that 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 sort of. I mean. Oh. That doesn't explain where do you why start. Well, You're that... struggling, aren't you? You're struggling where to start. Well, firstly, I can't see how we've now applied this to I've you know, been the thinking example of this. I've, I've been thinking of this for days, Steve. Waiting for you to I hear mean, this one. These coal mining parents yeah. did be negligent. Yeah, I, I love they've the left their baby because, in the bath because unattended. It, that's the way round to do it. The one covered in coal. Yeah. Has you go bath. first. Sure. You go first. Don't wash the baby and then get in that. Yeah. So you, you, one covered in coal goes first. Yeah. That's the best idea. Yeah. Second most dirty one goes second, yeah. and then the clean little baby. Yeah. I think. I I think we should do him last because yeah. he's, he's done nothing well, towards no, this family. But, but more than that, Rick, leave him to his own devices. Yeah. Jack, I'm just going to throw the water out. Yeah. In the bath. Don't check. Have you, first. Have you checked that the baby's down there? No, I'm not Don't even going to waste my time You'd checking. See it. You'd see it. I'd be able to see You'd a baby. You'd see a baby in if there. If a baby was in here, yeah. I'd be able to see it. I'm yeah. just going to throw it out. Yeah, I'm not even going to look, to be honest, Jack. Not We've all even had that bath. Yeah. If the baby's in there, yeah. then it should be, be making careful, sense. Jack. We have lost three children this way. Don't worry.
Supergrass, Grace on XFM 104.9. Coming up in the next hour, Carl Pilkington's new game show. He's very excited about I'm this. I'm excited. I'm excited. We don't I know anything wait. about it, but, but it's going to be dynamite. he's told me it's going to be a winner. He's, you know, he said it's going to go to television. Sure. Uh, I need some adverts, though. Oh, I'd love to hear some adverts. Can we have just two or three minutes of adverts, please? <laughs> Vines there, Steve, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl's getting very excited, as we all are, about his new... Should we, should we let him do a little taster for us? Well, I'm very excited about it. I mean, so, I, well, so the gist of it, what is it? What is it, exactly? Right. Is it a game show or is it a competition? It's just, um, just so it's something that, you know, you can play and also people at home, uh, can take part in it. Now, would they phone in about this or they can just play at home while they're listening? They can just play at home. Okay. Um, you mean we haven't got any prizes? No, there isn't. No, I, I think we, we, could, we could get in the phone in, maybe. Well, I don't know. Let's hear the game idea yeah. first. Yeah. Right, it's, it's music related. Okay. Good. And, um, what I do is, I sort of, uh, tell a little story. <laughs> okay. And that story makes up a song title. All right. Well, it right. sounds ambitious. So, um... Is it a cryptic clue? Uh, could be. <laughs> uh, say, say like this, right? <laughs> oh, dearie me. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Say like this. Right. This, this woman, right, she's pregnant. You know the answer to this one, so don't be saying anything. This okay. is just aimed at Steve. Okay. Right. This woman has a baby. Yeah. She's pregnant, has a baby. And the doctor's there in the, uh, in the hospital going, oh, yeah, you've got a, got a lovely little baby oh, here. Oh, you told me that this is... Oh, this guy. Got a lovely little baby. baby. Oh. Um, it's just coming out now. You'll be able to see it in a minute. And, uh, it's like covered in gunk and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, he's going, yeah, it's nearly here. It's coming out. I see, you see it's a little head and that. And, um, he gets hold of it and it's full of all this gunk, right? The baby's full of gunk. Yeah, it's like the eye. Covered in gunk or full of gunk? Covered in it. Right. And he goes, uh, here you go. Get hold of your baby. And he drops it. <laughs> Right. What song's that? There's so much irrelevance there, Steve. I can't tell you. It's not a cryptic clue. It's not a cryptic clue. Because only... Uh, I mean, the gist of it is that, relevant. That isn't the best one. That's just... Right. I mean, there is just... There's there's things there that you're tr 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 dwelling on and thinking of pun. Don't. Just go for gut instinct. What was it? What was that? Right, let me just... I just need to try and get the basics of this. There's a woman, she's pregnant, she has a baby. Yeah. The baby's covered in gunk. Yeah. Right. And because of the gunk, the doctor drops the baby. Yeah. yeah. And that's all I need to know. Yeah, that is all you need to know. Yeah, the um, pregnancy is largely irrelevant. <laughs> okay, what it's, are the what are the, the key birth, elements? It's the birth and the doctor dropping it that the irrelevant. The, the, the irrelevant birth thing. and the dropping of the baby. Yeah. Uh, I've I've absolutely no idea. I can't okay, even begin think, to get. Think about what's happened there. Oh, Carl, She's had a baby. The doctor's trying to deliver it. He's saying it's a nice little baby you've got here. This is all irrelevant. <laughs> this is all irrelevant. Right, let me tell you this. Right? So, so just to be fair to Steve, so he gets he can get into your mind. Right, this is not a traditional cryptic clue, okay. logical problem or This is this is Carl. What song am I thinking of? Right, <laughs> right. that is Underworld. Born Slippy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, actually, that makes textbook sense. Yeah. No, that does yeah. actually. No, do I'm like sorry. The, do you like all the story about the good <laughs> thing going so well, You can see it in a minute. Oh, it's just covered in gunk. Yeah. No, I agree there is some extraneous detail. Yeah, but I okay. have to say. Yeah. That. Born was good because it was. That, that's what. That's the look of it. Was yeah. Born was good, yeah. And I Born Slippy. I. Uh, no, I'm actually, I was quite impressed by that, Carl, I have to say. No, to be fair to you, I'm not just patronising you. Oh, well, I've got, oh, um, wow. I actually think that was really good, and I, I, I disrespect Ricky Gervais for slagging okay, off, because okay. I actually think that that was quite well, good. Well, let's go ahead with it, then. I, I, <laughs> on your I think bit. we could, we could maybe open this up to, uh, to email correspondence, or, okay, uh, or the let's phone go for it, then. Okay, this is Carl Pilkington's <laughs> new game show idea. It's what, it's, it's, uh, it's just wants the song. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> Carl Pilkington presents What's the Song? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what's the song? Well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's play a record. Let's, let's come well, back give after Give out the number if ready for him. Well, uh, if you should make a note of this. Uh, you can email us. The email's up and running. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, what's the phone number, Carl? It's 08700 800 1234. Okay. 08700 800 one, two, three, four. Make a note of that and we'll, uh, we'll have a game of, uh, what song is Carl thinking of after this next track? What do you want to play? What um, have you got there? Oh, oh, continuing, uh, again, uh, uh, old fogies who were good once and I Absolutely. won't hear a thing said against the new kids <laughs> yeah. out there. It's not all new metal, is it? True enough. This is, uh, Cat Stevens, uh, a, a little known album, Mona Bone Jack On, and this one's called Trouble. It's a lovely song. <laughs> Cat 
Stevens, Trouble, from Mona Bone Jack on, uh, on XFM 104.9, playing some new songs, playing some old songs. True enough, true enough. Playing some old games, some chit chat, some tears, some laughter, and Carl Pilkington with his brand new show, What's <laughs> the Song? What song am I thinking? Now, I, I'm, I, I mean, you're nervous about this, aren't you, Rick? I am. You're worried. Well, because I've heard some of these clues before. I and they're, they're ramblings, they're sometimes they're close to ramblings of a fool. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it really is like those, what am I thinking? Yeah. Um. I don't know though, I actually was genuinely impressed by Born Slippy. I, I, I have to give him the benefit That's of one of the better though. ones. Cause I, I, Cause that know. was short, sweet, and it worked. <laughs> Some of these, are, you say they're not gonna be quite as pissy. Some of them are like Emily Bronte novels. <laughs> um, now listen, we're just gonna go for it then. You do it and we'll just get people to call up. Cause I, I want, I wanna see the general public's confusion Absolutely. trying to work out a well, why don't we, uh, why don't we, why don't you give us your, your next clue <laughs> and then we'll play a track. And then we'll we'll hopefully have people on the line after the track right. to try and answer it, and you can recap briefly. So give us your clue now for uh, what song am I thinking of? Right, this one. Um, it's about a woman, and um, she's just normal, nothing wrong with her, or, <laughs> or so she thinks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the twist. <laughs> Is this like the Tales of the Unexpected? And she's got like, you know, she's got a mates and she's having a normal life, having a good time and that. And then this thing happens, right? <laughs> And, uh, she starts to stink <laughs> and she can't have a bath, right? And she really wants to have a bath. She's dead sweaty and stuff. She's trying to, she's going about her daily stuff. She can do everything else normal. She can eat, she can talk, everything. But for some reason, she can't have a bath. Is there a coal mining husband in the bath? <laughs> yeah. Is this born stinky? <laughs> <laughs> she can't have a bath. So a woman can't have a bath. Yeah. Or, that it, or a shower. She can't. <laughs> okay, leave it there, Rick. Don't try and guess. It's not okay. fast to guess. Um, the general public can phone up and ask questions. So I just just I'm go not for sure it. They can, can they? I, don't think, I think so. I thought we don't want just people just um, phoning well, up let's and getting tell you, it. Why about this? Why don't they can ask one question? Yeah. They can ask one question of Carl. Then they have to make a guess. Okay. Oh eight seven hundred. 800 one, two, Have we got three, someone four. on the line now? Well, we'll just no, let's do it. Let's, right, go, for let's, let's go, go for one. Let's go for one. This I'm is edge, edgy radio. This is letting Carl stuff. Right. Live. Hello. Go on. Hello, XFM. Hello. I'm ringing about, um, what's the song? Absolutely. What do you think? Well, I'm going for Dirty Diana. Dirty Diana. See, that works. That's a great guess. It does, yeah, but it doesn't work because why can't she have a bath? Okay, so well, the answer is in there. I was going to ask you. Well, well, that's your one that, question. That'd be the answer. That would be the answer, I'm afraid. What was your name? Shelley. Shelley, thanks very much. Shelley, I should, I should tell you that, you know, that you should never take this personally because no one can really get into the mind of Carl, so <laughs> don't, don't, you know, beat yourself up about this. I don't expect anyone to get these clues. No. So, um, so well done. That a is guess. a fine guess. That's Thank you. Guess. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else there? That's, that's, uh, hello, XFM. Who's that on the line? Um, it's Chris. Hello, Chris. Uh, a question for Carl? Before um, you I give us a guess? Have, like, uh, I haven't thought of a really good question or anything yet. You just want to go for the guess? No, well, no, what I thought was, um, I'm sure Simon Mayo used to do this when he did a breakfast show <laughs> on Radio 1 years ago. No, he didn't. <laughs> so you've just <laughs> pinched this idea, idea Carl. If you're going to rip story. someone off, Carl, do not rip off Simon Mayo. I haven't ripped this off. I thought this was a new idea. I was going to do it with sound effects instead, but that's... Yeah, a, that's he used a... to do that and he used to get his team to play other characters. In the you story. idiot. Well, no, hang on. Not you, not you, Chris. I'm, okay. I'm saying you idiot to Carl. Yeah, but nothing's new anyway, is it? So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting annoyed about it. <laughs> what do you think the answer is? <laughs> um, is it Cornflake? Girl by Tori Amos. Good answer. She couldn't have a bath because she'd go all she floppy, floppy and, and then go down the plate. <laughs> Good answer. She'd so, go all soggy. Yeah. So it's not, is it cornflake girl? No, it's not, but that's, that's a uh, great answer. It could have been. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're already seeing the error of this, aren't you? I think this like, is great radio. I'm I know. really hooked on this. I'm but genuinely this, excited. This now. is really like that, um, uh, those, uh, so called lateral thinkers. A man got into a field and dies. Why? <laughs> yeah. Um, he ran out of air. No. <laughs> yeah. Not the one I'm thinking he was of. Shot. Well, no. Uh, yeah. That's Go a good answer. Well, but couldn't, like Simon Mayo, like, sue you or something for doing it. Will you like stop? Don't mention that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen, I think if you're going to steal ideas from someone, it should be a brain box like Mayo. <laughs> I mean, he's the man. Yeah, the only fun. example of one I can ever remember here on this show, because I was quite young then, was um, some people were pretending to like tap someone's phone or something, and then they got caught, and the answer was just bugging by whistle because they were genius. Uh, yeah. That was absolute genius. That's yeah. absolute genius. Chris, See, Carl, that's Carl's the sort of standard you've got to come, that come that up against. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Chris. No the phone lines are hot. Oh, hello, XFM. <laughs> Hi, is it Candy Perfume Girl? Is it what? Candy Perfume Girl. Candy Perfume Girl? Yeah. Ca candy Perfume Girl. Is it- well, who's that by? Madonna. No, it's- That sounds like an obscure album track. No, it's, it's, it's one of their- one of her songs. 
Just think about it. it. She she stinks and everything. She's a normal life. She's. I didn't say she was a sweet or anything. Um, <laughs> but she, for some reason, she can't have a bath or is a shower. Is this a big song? Just to give him a clue. Is it's, a, it's a bigger song than uh, Candy Sweet Girl. <laughs> Thank it you very much for your guess. It clearly is <laughs> Thank right. you. It Cheers. Was, Sorry. A, it w you know, we okay. Play, one, one more, then we go yeah. to a record. Come right. on. Okay. Go on. Hello, XFM. Go. Yeah. Is it High and Dry by Radiohead? High and Dry. High and Dry. Now that's great. She smells, which is another word for high. She's dry because she doesn't have a shower. Carl, if it isn't <laughs> that, yours will <laughs> never be as good as that. He's the winner. Whatever you're thinking of, that clue is brilliant. What's your name, mate? It's Richie. Richard. Richard, uh, I mean, you can't beat that. That's a bit too lateral. Don't be stupid. <laughs> it's perfect. He's made yours into a clever clue. He's made high, she smells, dry, she never gets in the bath or shower. It's yeah. not that, is it, Carl? No, it's you not. don't even get that, do you? Not have really. You ever, <laughs> have you ever heard of the word high being used to mean sort of smelly? No. No, no. Oh, what? Well, that was where you went wrong there, mate. <laughs> Richard, um, well, I'm declaring you the winner, even though that isn't the answer. I don't think Thank we you. should give up this early. Can we just, uh, can, let's play a song. And, let's play and a song. Give it, give it one more chance, because yeah. if people think about it, it is really easy. So, I'm not going to find out the answer, though, because I've got to go out. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll do it very quickly. Stay in for ten minutes. We're just going to play a new, uh, okay. Coldplay track out. Okay, let's play the Coldplay and then Cheers. we'll come back with this. Bye. Coldplay, one I love. That's for um, Nick, Neil, Olivia in uh, Tower Bridge. Absolutely, and also Nikki from Bromley who emailed in. She's enjoying the show and she uh, she wanted a bit of Coldplay. That's the B side of the current single. This is a great place. show, isn't it? We've got great music. We've great got music. laughs, tears. We've got requests. We've got Simon Mayo games. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a bit. It's just it's just like Radio One for <laughs> less people. <laughs> exactly. Radio One for less people. Yeah. This is great. Isn't um, it? So so, go on, so listen, Carl, you were so excited about this game, weren't you earlier? You ca you came in with a but hop, skip, and a leap in your in your flat. step. Although I must say the phones are going mental. We're gonna have to take this some more calls. No, People I mean, call. high and dry is great. I mean, it works. <laughs> That's it. A, can we have a very quick just um, recap in case someone's yeah. just? Yeah. Yeah. Quick can recap. you make it? Can you make it so high and dry doesn't work? Now, give us a bit of information that makes it different to high and dry. Or can't so for those that have just that? tuned in, Carl describes in a roundabout way a story which somehow is representative of a song. Is a that song right? title? A song title. Yeah. Okay. So um, this woman, she's 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 all right. You know, she has a normal life. <laughs> Pretty much. Kind of. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's probably a few things actually that she can't do thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but the main problem would be having a, having a wash or having a bath or having a shower. Yeah. Maybe going for a swim thinking about it. <laughs> right. Oh, that's, that's I think water is the clue, isn't it? That's the clue. <laughs> All right, so fair uh, who's that on the line? Hi there, it's Mark. Hello, Mark. Hi, Mark. Right, what do you think? It smells like Teen Spirit, Nirvana. No, it's not. That's a great guess. Smells like Teen Spirit again. It's also no. brilliant. Thank you, Mark. Well done. No, no, it's not that. All right. Hello, XFM. Oh, that's that's oh. that's a dodgy mobile. Oh, that's a bit of a clue. A dodgy Hello, mobile. XFM. Oh, they've just given up. They, they've all been going for Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. They just hung up. Hello, XFM. Uh, hi. Is it? Um, she's electric. Excellent. She's electric. It makes sense. That's oh. fantastic. Oh, Carl. she's electric. <laughs> Why does she smell? Because she doesn't have a bath and that. Because she can't have a bath or a shower. What's what's your name? Neil. Neil so got does it. that. So oh, Neil got God. it. So did you get it straight away? Uh, no, only uh, during the song. A process of elimination from all the other wrong answers. Yeah, basically. So she's electric. Rick, I have to say, you you're holding your head in hand in oh. your hands, and it looks like you want to shoot off. But I have to say, I thought that was quite good. I genuinely thought that was quite good. But it's not a cryptic clue, is it? Because it's not. She smells. There's a few things you can't do. She's electric. Yeah, but do you understand what what I'm getting at? <laughs> She's electric. She's I always understand what you're getting at, Carl. That's never been a problem in the you know the years I've known you. Neil got it. Yeah. She's I electric. have to say, really, I think you're down on this idea. I could definitely see that ITV One replacing Get I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. Carl Pilkington hosting. It's Simon Mayo yeah. on the phone <laughs> exactly. to the lawyers. <laughs> well, uh, well, Neil, there's no prizes or anything, but well done. Uh, well done. That was well worth it. Right. Well, you go away with the award in the knowledge that you've beaten Carl. Yeah. 
You can get, it's secure in the knowledge that you thought <laughs> how Carl does. <laughs> Absolutely. Well done, Neil. Okay. I have to say, I, I think you're being harsh on him. I think that's, okay. a, that's a great game. Alright, let's do it again next week. I then. thought that was a great game. Yeah. Brilliant. Well play, done, record. Carl. play record. Play uh, record. what do you want to play? Oh, you know, I tell you, uh, we've been playing some oldies, Rick, and I've enjoyed them all, but I think I've been in love with this song for many, many years, and when I saw it, reminded of it in Con Air, the film Con Air. Remember, they stick it on in Con Air, and it's just dynamite. It's Leonard Skinner. I, I love this. Sweet home Alabama. Oh, player. turn this up. Oh, this one up. Crank it up. Turn it up. Sweet home Alabama. <laughs> Leonard Skinner. Yeah. Strange and beautiful. Aqua Lung. Or as Carl says, Aqua Lung. On XFM. 104.9. Well, it seems that Carl's clue, um, you know, did go down quite well. Some other people got it. Uh, the game show as a whole has been well received. Well, I have to say, the, uh, the email, you know, we've had, we've had loads of emails, Rick. You yeah. know, I mean, we've had, uh, let me just count two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, one of them was aimed at, uh, Simon Mayo. <laughs> yeah, came to us by mistake. Uh, they yeah, thought they were listening to Mayo. Yeah. And the yeah. other is, uh, saying Carl is up, they got the game show. Radio One with less people. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. And uh, so, despite the fact it was a stolen idea, I think we yeah. can do it again next week. Just and like next week, let's, let's rustle up some prizes as well. You're just like your little magpie, aren't you? Thieving shiny <laughs> ideas <laughs> from Mayo's nest. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so anyway, we played Leonard Skinner just before the ads, and I was just looking at the compilation it comes from. It's a great compilation. We took this from uh, Driving Rock. Yeah. Uh, which I imagine this is not available in the shops. <laughs> exactly. Um, I imagine it's come straight from the personal collection of uh, maybe Tarrant or uh, Foxy. Or Canfield. But there's some great names on here that I'd like to see. Maybe we could He's play them. He's a little Vance, isn't he? He's a tiny <laughs> Vance. Exactly. So, you know, you're a little Mayo. Canfield's a little Vance. I mean, these are some names. Just Go don't, on. I haven't heard them for a long time. Go I'd on. love to hear them again. Go Alana on. Miles. Mm. Blackfield. No, rubbish. Rhea. You don't hear Rhea, no? Chris, Chris Rhea. Rhea. Yeah. Well, what one? Spin Doctors. Oh, God. Lest we forget the Spin Doctors. God. Crash Test Dummies. Mm. What happened mm. to them? I don't know. Uh, who else have we got on here? Richard Marks. Yeah. Mr. Big. I didn't. He's guilty in that song when he goes, I swear I did. And all that. And the police came around. Well, there's no smoke without fire. I reckon he did it. To be honest. <laughs> I, yeah. reckon he, I reckon he murdered her. You're absolutely right. Go on. Legs, ZZ Top. <laughs> She knows how to use them. <laughs> she does indeed. She knows how to. It's so what it is. It's electrical impulse from the brain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, what, the, how is she using them? What's she's she just. She's just. Um, it's you know. The brothers do beer on her as well. Oh, isn't that? There's wrong with them. No, absolutely no. It's Starship. Yeah. And uh, Toto as well. Oh, you it's not actually. What is it? Can you name another Toto track? Hold the line. It's hold the line. Let's hold rock. It. Put that on. <laughs> it's a good, it's a Let's good stuff. Down. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> ow. Oh, is it good stuff? When session musicians get together. <laughs> oh, we Can got we hear a quick little blast? Oh, it should be, is that, is that this oh, still play in a little bit, hold the line. It's that great. Should be, uh, that should be track, uh, oh, let me see, no. that's probably track ten. I hope this doesn't annoy too many people. <laughs> like, we're worried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We like to give our radio slick. <laughs> is this it? This is not it. Yeah. Wake up a minute. Alright, yeah. Yeah. We're playing, uh, that was dynamite. That was great. We'll have some. I think we should have like a classic rock anthem every week. I, oh, do you not I'd, think? I'd, I mean, I'd love that. to. I'd dynamite. love to. Bit of rainbow maybe next week. Oh, Who knows? Man alive! Phone in if you want to hear some classic rock. <laughs> classic rock, indeed. Oh, we ripped off Mayo. Let's do Vance. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's just uh, steal ideas from other better DJs. Okay. Um. Oh, what? What? Can we we have? There's some great ideas out there. I'm sure. I, I mean, if you if you want to like any fix, it's done. <laughs> if you may want to eat a packed yeah. lunch on a roller coaster. On a roller coaster, yeah, with some boy scouts or or. or, or Dance with Banana Rama. Yeah. Then uh, yeah. we're we're, yeah. we're yeah. or five star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the fact five star <laughs> reform. There's three of them. <laughs> Have you read about this? <laughs> no. Oh. Turn left. White Stripes on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkington. Well, I had a good time. I've enjoyed it, yeah, it's been nice. It's some, been fun. Some good tracks, some, some laughs, a new, uh, competition by yeah. Simon Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, Absolutely. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Carl, have you heard, um, the big news? 
that uh, Ricky Gervais is uh, looking to take up. Um, well, you explain it, Gervais, because oh, I'm not. Oh, it's not I'm big not, news. No. I, what are you talking? What do you mean? You, 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 you want, you're taking up boxing. Is this right? N no. What well, is the story? You want to be fighting for money? No. What is that? Yeah, bare knuckle fighting. No, come on. What is it? No. All, all it is. I've been watching this um, show. It's on cable called Born to Fight, and it's sort of, sort of right. late. It's a late one. <laughs> we flick around, and, and I think it's uh, on uh, After Roadies, which is like. Roadies? A, yeah, it's a bloke, one bloke with a camera who goes on tour with different people. Like, he went on with Motorhead, he went with, uh, with a meatloaf um, uh, uh, tribute act, <laughs> he went on with Coldplay, was in one of them. It's, uh, and it's the is sort this of. It's when like, all the other cable. channels have been switched off. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah exactly, left. yeah. And there's one uh, called Born to Fight, and uh, they just uh, take a different story. It might be like, an amateur fight, or it might be um, an unlikely licensed fight, not illegal, yeah. um, or it might be white collar, which I'm thinking of doing. What's, what's white collar? White collar is just people who want to fight. And uh, it's organised. Is it like a fight club? Yeah, it's just, but it's charity. It, it's safe. It's 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 a charity do. You know, having like, big events, and it's just two people that you know aren't boxers, aren't amateur boxers, and they get in the ring. They do three three um, two minute rounds, and they just lay into each other. They've got head guards on. And uh, Rick, I don't mean to alarm you, but. Um, you know, we work together, obviously, and, and we make the office and stuff. Your face is my fortune. <laughs> I can't that, have that it. That must being, be a bit of a worry for you. It is. I'm not going to say. Well, your heart as well is also a concern. Yeah. You know, and you're eating and stuff. But so when I said well, I was, no, was, 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 was going to get fit, you were going, no, Gervais, you're only funny because you're fat. No, I agree. This is true. But I'm saying there's a degree, there's a difference between being fit. Yeah. And um, and I would say, yeah, for instance, don't eat, in. well, don't eat um, don't eat kind of you know uh, cheese and bacon, you know, <laughs> on their own <laughs> all day, all day, all right. for breakfast. So what I'm saying is there's a difference between you know exercising and then having yeah. your face beaten in. And yeah. what I'm saying is that you, it, I just don't think it's a good idea. But I might win. No, the pro- well, I don't, you, it, that's, that's, that's irrelevant. You're still gonna get, take a couple of blows to the face. And the point is this, Rick, you're not gonna win. Why? Because, no, because you are delusional. You think that you are probably the world's greatest boxer. <laughs> you are, I know, ever since I've known you, you seem to think that that's the case, because you've watched all the Rocky films. <laughs> And you think that's fair enough? That seems straightforward enough. <laughs> but look at your physique. You know, yeah, you've got some upper body strength, but yeah. you know, you've also got some upper, some <laughs> lower belly strength as well. I noticed. And um, <laughs> and my concern is, you're going to go in there, and okay. you're not only going to be a broken man when you realise that you're just not as handy in the ring as you thought you were. Yeah. But also, you're going to you're going to incur some injuries. This you is wear fighting masks? talk. This is fighting talk. The first rule of fight like, club is don't this, talk about fight club. This one's we want to do it more now, just because of you. It was the same when Adrian didn't agree that Rocky could beat right Clever yeah. Lang. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she she made that mistake. Then she made the same mistake at with, what with age, Drago. Rick? At what age? She turns up at the end to take a bit of the credit, didn't she? When you were this kind of thin, nimble youth in yeah. your makeup and your eyeliner and all the rest of yeah. it, you I bet you had no idea. You had no thoughts about boxing. It never came into your mind, did it? So at what age did you suddenly think, wait a minute, I've taken the wrong path in life. I could have been the world <laughs> heavyweight. I don't think I could. When are you? When have you suddenly decided that you can you, you you can suddenly be a bit street tough? I don't understand why this has suddenly come about. In, well, I'm not in putting out life. a shout, am I, to fight people? It's not. I'm not. It's not like Noel but Gallagher you've got to find and Robbie some, Williams. But you've got to find someone else, presumably, to fight with. Yeah, but it'd probably be a businessman who wants to fight. Right. Do you know there's something really weird about that? Don't you think that sounds? Have you just listened to yourself? I want to fight another. Bi I want to fight a businessman. <laughs> no, Please, I may I fight a, a businessman? I want to fight a businessman. <laughs> you just I want, said I want to fight someone who wants to. It's, you know, it's not. I want to fight them though. <laughs> I want to fight somebody. Did you realise it sounds a bit mad? Bring yeah. them on! I want to fight people. No, but it's more that it's more the effort and the training, the commitment to it, like climbing a mountain. I mean, I think climbing a mountain and doing a marathon is ridiculously macho. It's not the fact that you can. No, do that's it and not go, macho compared well, to macho, isn't it? Climbing, there's no reason to climb a mountain, there's no reason to do a marathon. If you can run a mile, that's all you need. The fact that you train is to whether you can do it yourself and achieve something. And this is more <coughs> like the training and the learning uh, skill and then seeing if it works. I, I don't want to get in there. To, but aren't you concerned about you might get beaten? Or you might get beaten up, I should say. No! What's the worst that can happen? I, it was You'll get black eyes, bruises in your- Wait, bruises- bruises- <laughs> Jermaine, let me just remind you of the what? time we were working in your flat, <laughs> right? And you immediately- <laughs> Right, I think- I don't know to this day what happened, but you started choking. <laughs> You clasped your chest. <laughs> you were breathing, <laughs> wheezing. <laughs> right, I leapt over to you. I remember screaming. I don't know the Heimlich maneuver. Yeah. If you've swallowed something, I can't help. Yeah. You gained your breath. You gained your composure. Yeah. I said, yeah. "What happened? Did you eat something? Did you go down the wrong way?" You said, "No. I swallowed some dust." <laughs> I swallowed some dust. You breathed some dust in that was in the air. There was some dust in the air. You breathed that in. It knocked you out for two days. 
Rick, you're in bed for two yeah. days. I love that. I don't I, think you. I don't I think you're the man for the job. And that's some dust. What do you think this businessman's gonna do? Exactly. He'll be permanent. Hide your appointment. Yeah. He'll hide your appointment. You found a lump in your new testicle once. We sat in a uh, <laughs> doctor's waiting room. I remember for about forty five minutes. I haven't checked out. It was fine. I think I went twice, didn't my I? Point, yeah, I point. said to the doctor at one point. I said, "Did you check round the back?" Yeah. I was thinking he hadn't checked it. Yeah. yeah. Oh dear. My, just because I hadn't found anything. My point is this: oh. you're something of hypochondriac. You know you're something of hypochondriac. <laughs> you know that already. So. <laughs> Uh, why do you think this is going to be any different? Wow. If you take a- when you take the first blow to the head, you take the punch, you'll immediately think that you've got some kind of, you know, brain disorder. No, I've always- and you'll be I've done always wanted to do it, but I just up. thought- I just thought, I wanted to make sure, I wanted to know that I definitely lost my looks. Right. And, um, I've seen some of the publicity shots, I've got mirrors and mouths, so now- because I've definitely lost my looks now, I've got nothing to lose. Yeah. So I want, you know, maybe a younger, more handsome man, I want to teach him a <laughs> lesson. <laughs> Let me just- I'll end with this. Right. For people who listen to this show, regularly, yeah. you already sound like you're punch drunk. <laughs> Alright? And that's just your natural way of talking. Please, let's not do the real thing. Oh, play a record. Oh. I mean, is it going to be televised? Uh, it, well, we could get it on DVD, maybe release right, it. Alright, I'm interested. Okay. Is there money to be made? <laughs> yeah, not for oh, money. Well, maybe we should talk about it. Okay. <laughs> On XFM 104.9. You join us now live at uh, Shipley Old People's Home, <laughs> where uh, TV star Ricky Gervais <laughs> is taking on his first uh, non-professional bout. Yeah. Um, Ricky, who are you fighting this evening? Uh, a bloke called Pete Smedley. <laughs> okay, Pete Smedley. How old is Pete? He's 72. 72 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you're very excited about the fight, I know. Yeah, he's, yeah, uh, yeah, Pete's yeah. just recovered from a massive coronary, hasn't he? Well, I don't want to get into that. He's <laughs> deemed himself fit, and okay. uh, that's, that's good enough for me. <laughs> if he, if he wants to fight. Listen, right, someone just called up and said, uh, they're fighting me. He's sounded he's pretty, such a bad pretty tasty. I said, how, how tall he? He said, five foot eleven. I said, what do you weigh? He said, thirteen stone. I said, how old are you? Twenty-seven. Mm. I explained to him I'm looking for someone a lot older and smaller. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A lot, lot older and smaller than Donna Stell. <laughs> <laughs> if Donna yeah. Stell from, uh, what's it? <laughs> it ain't I'm going to show you now, Steve. Listen, no, yeah. it's just a sport. You know, mm. people go, oh, don't go into badminton. The shuttlecock can hurt your eye. <laughs> it's just a sport. Okay, fair enough. We'll, 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 I'm sure we'll resume this conversation next week. Yeah. When, of course, we'll also be playing more of uh, Carl's new brilliant game with prizes, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Simon Mayo's What Is Carl <laughs> Thinking? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I I'll leave you with a song for uh, the ladies, Rick, if I may. Yeah. Uh, this is by uh, my friend uh, Harry, you may know, he sends me tr uh, tracks every so often that I should yeah. listen to, and uh, this is a particular favourite of mine. Pretty please, and it's by Kevin Tahista's Red Terror. I don't know if I've pronounced that right. But enjoy that, and we'll uh, see you next week. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Play and in my place on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Hello, Hello there. Steve. Hello, lovely to be here. Carl Pilton there, pressing the buttons. Great to be here. Yeah. How long can you maintain it? I'm bored already. already. Yeah, already bored of doing it. Bored that. already. Every week you start it the same way. Yeah. That was not bad though. You actually grammatically made sense. Which is really? uh, impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so, very much. A rare treat indeed from yeah. Ricky Gervais. Um, some of the uh, listeners have already worked out. I've got nothing to say at all. <laughs> sure, haven't prepared again. No, we were we we did come in half hour early to repair, but instead, me and Carl were playing. You had to flick the football into the bin. Right. We had five goes each, or the world was going to end. Okay, and that that took up. That took up a good 25 minutes. Yeah. I liked it when we came back and then we started just trying to beat each other in the corridor and I beat him. I scored a goal. He, he was gutted because he thought he, he fancied himself a football and I beat him. Um, and I was knackered and sweating. Yeah. Um, and, uh, as I walked back to you about five minutes ago, you were looking through the records, you went, and this was lovely, you went, <sighs> Well, we've done the preparation then. Uh, yeah. Like a sarcastic teacher. Yeah. Like a teenager, like an annoyed <laughs> teenager. <laughs> whose parents have embarrassed him once again. <laughs> and you beat Carl, did you? Yeah. Because you're not. Yeah. I mean, you're not particularly. I'm not good at football. Well, you're no. not particularly nimble on your feet. Oh, come no, on. No, you're not. Douglas Bader is um, more nimble. I'm all right. I'm you're all not. right. But it, Carl's sort of. I think he's got more skills than me, but he hasn't got the aggression and the sure. weight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I just yeah. pushed him aside. Yeah, good work. Yeah. Good work. I'm going on holiday. Are you? Yeah, we're not, I'm not here next week. What are you gonna do, Carl? Are you gonna do the best of or something next week, aren't you? Yeah, that's what we've got to sort out. Well, I can't sort it out. I've literally- I've, I've got to go to the airport no, after. No, no, straight after the show, you've got to do some links. No, so. I'm not doing any links. I said I wouldn't, so- That's we... what we planned. No, we didn't. I said I'd do some during the show, and then you I could... thought you were joking. I, I, I honestly can't do it today, so we do some during the show. What are you gonna do? Just put the shows that we've done this year? Sorry, guys. Uh, I hate to interrupt. This no. is the sort of stuff we should have been discussing <laughs> when you were playing football. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. Play it. What are you gonna play? Play it. Play Let's have a bit of Foo Fighters. Okay. Let's just get this off there. Okay. Foo Fighters there, learning to fly. Steve, I hope the pilot that I get today flying the plane that I'm going on holiday in has already learned to fly. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well done, that is dynamite. That's, so, that's a textbook link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, genius. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Where, where are you going? Where, yeah, what, what's the story? Yeah. Where are you off to? Uh, Sorrento. Where's that? Uh, sort of south Italy. Italy? Yeah. What are you like on holiday? Are you a nightmare? Are you the, no. like... Oh, I was Because you're quite... Nightmare. But you're quite, I mean, obviously, I, you know, I've often said on the radio before that I, I mean, I'm uh, spending any length of time with you is, is, is one of the most unbearable <laughs> things I've ever had to do. <laughs> I mean, spending a week with you is nightmarish and sharing any kind of accommodation is, do you know what I mean? No, seriously, I mean, it's like, it's like <laughs> hell. It's like li a living hell. <laughs> It's like having a teenager. No, just do. It's like having a sort of teenage kid who can can't be entertained by anything. Just chill out. Yeah, just chill out, dude. Just max relax. Yeah, max relax. Yeah, sure. Sure. And do you? And so, if you're in somewhere like Italy, like somewhere like that, because obviously a very beautiful city and very cultured and stuff. Yeah. Is that something that you enjoy? Do you enjoy the culture of that? The beautiful architecture that's there. A hotel's the same anywhere. As long as there's room service and a nice room in port, it's nice weather. Sure. If it's not, I'm annoyed. Yeah, yeah. And I need to blame someone. And is it true that you go because you go to Italy mostly? Don't you? Is that because that's the only food you like? I like food? I like pasta and pizza. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I've I've been to other places. I went to France once, and th you can't explain to them to cook it prop. Just cook <laughs> it properly. I don't want any to cook yeah. it. It's, yeah. There's blood in the middle of that. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Hungary, there was it was just oh, I went there for a while, and I didn't know I couldn't identify the animals right, they were totally killing wrong. for me. Yeah. So and yeah. I know quite a lot about natural history, sure. and I couldn't identify what was on the plate. Yeah. So I don't. Can I ask for a couple of days? No, I just got, I got annoyed, and I well, I, I went to McDonald's. Yeah. Well, that's the um, great thing. About McDonald's as they are in most exactly. major cities. No, but I, you, can't, I, you can't go wrong with so pasta and So if I was with you on holiday and I, you know, we were we were hanging out or whatever, yeah. um, and I took you to say maybe a, a beautiful cathedral. Is that yeah. something you'd enjoy? I can't quite imagine you actually taking well, the time to. Well, as long as it, as long as it's not a very long walk, we don't have to stay there more than a couple of minutes. I'd, lo I'd love to look around <laughs> places. Right, so you would yeah. you'd look at the cathedral. Yeah. That's taken you know that's, that takes people breath you know takes people's breath away. You know, yeah. people travel from around the world to see that. You would. Yeah. And how long would you I don't stay? Know, travel around the world to see it. I think they go somewhere sure. and they go. Well, they might as well look at the cathedral. You can't miss it. They're huge. Yeah. <laughs> would you? And um, would you? Uh, would you sort of spend any time looking at that? Would you just sort of soak in the atmosphere for a moment, or you would you? I'd look at it and I'd go, "That's brilliant." And then yeah. if there was any sort of soaking in, I can do that later when there's <laughs> nothing to look at. <laughs> right. What you best to do? Your memory of it later when you're in the bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, you can sure. Sort of, you know, uh, and would you? I mean, so can you? Uh, can you be kind of in awe of something like that? Yeah, well, well, if, it's if it's big, okay. If I, if I go in the cathedral and it's and it's I've seen bigger, I go. Oh, I've seen bigger. <laughs> sure. If it's the biggest I've seen, I go. That is huge. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and then let you off. Yeah, sure. Because you are you're a sort of man who gets bored, and this is true, Carl. You may not be the fool of this. Ricky Gervais is a man who gets bored drinking a glass of water. It's boring because it's not flavoursome enough. No, it's, uh, it's I, not I, got enough flavour. It's, it's absolute. Bore, uh, the only uh, Jane's got me onto fizzy water, which at least got something there. Right. Uh, but I only drink that when I'm sort of dehydrated in the middle of the night. I never, there's no, I never drink a drink of water. No, it's, it is boring. Yeah, yeah. Well, but that's why you've always got headaches, and you're always apparently yeah. moaning and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's part of another one of the reasons I hate you. Uh, is in it? A, in a, in a, but when I, I don't, when I say hate you, I don't mean I hate you. I didn't mean. Did to, I, I didn't mean to blur it out that strongly. <laughs> yeah. um, what I mean is, if I'm spending a lot of time with you, <laughs> well, I'm that's right. He said, you. "Well, we're in the BBC canteen," and I was sort of like, and he just put his. And I thought, I said, I'll never eat him with you again. I said, what's the matter? He said, you annoy me. You, I hate eating with you. It annoys me. You've got, it looks like a child food. It's just, you eat chips and sausage and rubbish. You don't eat, look at you, don't touch your vegetables. You don't drink water. He said, you, I, he really got well, annoyed. Because you, you, you've got this, like, the, this hatred of anything that's good for you. You won't eat any form of salad. You just Why do I eat salad? Because it's good for you and Lettuce is boring. Lettuce is absolutely boring. Um, uh, cucumber are boring. But, you know? but, yeah, but the thing is, you see, I admit that lettuce and cucumber have not got much flavour, but that's why people will add, say, a in Italy, they'll add a lovely dressing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some olive oil, maybe some balsamic vinegar. Well, you embarrass yourself, <laughs> because the good thing about a nice, mature lump of cheddar cheese <laughs> is you don't have to have any dressing. <laughs> <laughs> Although you add some anyway. I put a little you bit of olive oil in it and maybe some mayonnaise. Maybe but, some, uh, you know, and dressing. On a Ritz cracker, you don't need it, it's just extra. <laughs> Sure, sure. Well, good luck. I notice you're wearing the. Is this your travelling gear? You got the sweatpants and the, yeah. the t-shirt, the free t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, Looking to get an upgrade, are you? Or? I'm, I'm going first class. Sure. Yeah. Badly drawn boy, spitting in the wind on XFM 104.9. Are you going to be taking in any of the uh, culture in Italy? Is yeah. that something you do? Yeah. The opera. Well, 
Uh, I don't know about the opera. I've never been to the opera. Uh, I do like a you know. You like the opera? Yeah, not. I wouldn't sit through a whole one, but I mean, I like I like the songs they take from it for that World Cup one, <laughs> and those two fat birds that they sung in Shawshank Redemption was good. Yes, but um, I think yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I haven't gone into it extensively. I haven't studied the art. <laughs> the art of opera. Also, it's in foreign, so you don't really know what's happening. It's in foreign. Yeah, yeah. so you don't. Know That's that. annoying for you. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. What about? Are you a, are you a fan of any of the great English operas? <laughs> Like um, the Pirates of Penzance, <laughs> yeah, Gilbert and <laughs> Sullivan. To me, Gilbert and Sullivan were like the probably their their day equivalent of like Richard Stilgo getting together with Tony Slattery, <laughs> and then a hundred years later, people go, "It's brilliant." It, it is like they might as well. Um, I don't know. Make th any any episode of whose line is it anyway? Right. Yeah. Into an opera, and in two hundred years' time, we're going. That's genius. Yeah. Listen to this one. Look, this is party quirks. <laughs> yeah. Am Dram Society. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're a step. Because <laughs> oh, I, I was well, I was in oh. the Paris of Penzance once in an amateur production. You used to like whose lines it anyway? I did. That was Although yeah, I did watch since. it when it first came on Channel Four about yeah. 15, 20 years ago. But we um we did the Paris of Penzance when I was in an amateur dramatic society in Bristol. Uh, the Bristol. Operatic society, light operatic society. I don't know why I was involved because I can't sing. My audition. I thought this is how desperate they were for blokes. I swear to God, right? I can't sing. You know? Were you? I, yeah. All right, calm down. And um, <laughs> I uh, I went in and they said, so "What are you going to sing?" I went, "Uh, well, I, I just I don't I, I want to surprise you." They said, "Do you want a piano accompaniment?" I said, "No, I don't think so." so I went to the back. I swear to God, I went to the back of the room and I just sang, "Thumbelina, Thumbelina, tiny little thing, Thumbelina dance, Thumbelina." Sing, Thumbelina. What's the difference if you're very small? Because when your heart is full of love, you're six feet tall. I just did that, and they just looked to me like I was the weirdest freak they'd ever had. Immediately put me in the chorus because they that was just what they were for blokes. We stayed and we rehearsed it. I couldn't remember the lyrics. <laughs> Thank God you were doing Thumbelina. Yeah, yeah. Oh but dear. Couldn't, I couldn't. Um, I you know I couldn't remember the lyrics. What was it for? It was it Gilbert and Sullivan. It was it was the Pirates of Penzance. Oh. There weren't enough blokes, right? So that we had to double up. So some of the pirates <laughs> had to double up as the policemen who were chasing the pirates. A little bit problematic in the scene when the policemen and the pirates have a fight. <laughs> That was a little bit tricky, <laughs> and the worst thing. So there's a sequence where, like, the, the sort of the daughters of the major general, all kind of like, oh, beautiful, something like you know, um, oh, beautiful little girls are we, da la 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 la. And the women they had, they must have all been over forty. I mean, real kind of oh. toothless crones oh. creeping around in their nineties. Is it the sort of women that buy one of those sort of porcelain dolls exactly. from the TV? I go, yeah. look, I've had a baby. It's not a real. Baby. <laughs> it is a real baby. I'm gonna stab you. Yeah, one of those. Exactly. It's the sort of women. That you'd see maybe on uh, TV's Bargain Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the kind of contestants you get on there. Those were women who, who were sort of very nam drama and they, they think they've clung on to their looks, but they've oh. never made it in. in uh, the guy who was playing the. Uh, there's a guy who's supposed to be an 18 year old prince, uh, an 18 year old pirate, uh, the Pirate King. He must have been 40 <laughs> years a day. He also directed the show, though, so he got to prance around in these thigh high boots. <laughs> Ludicrous. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> it was shameful, really. I'd I love to go to Amdram. Amdram is a whole other world. It's just it's such an incredible place. Because there's so much. Backbiting and envy and really oh it's incredible. I mean, it's worse than the real world of theatre and TV. It's unbelievable because the same old people get to do it every year because they can hold a note. Can it's, we go along? You would absolutely adore it, Jervis. It is a secret camera. Have you ever done the in, in a play Pilk? We know this, Carl. You've, uh, you've performed just at the uh, the talent show, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, the talent show. Yeah. Remind us of the talent and, show. Uh, that's when I did uh, walk like an Egyptian, dressed up as a woman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, did me magic trick. Oh, that's that. Is it an egg? The egg one. Yeah. Um, what was the egg one again? When I, uh, I should have ruined it now saying the egg one, but I went on stage with like an anki. Yeah. And I said, uh, at this point I was dressed up as a caretaker in it. <laughs> sure. I don't know why, I can't remember. No. But I stood there with this, uh, with this anki over my hand. Yeah. I said, right, you're gonna love this one. Yeah. I said, I'm gonna make a, a bird appear in front of your, in front of your eyes, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh god, what's he gonna do? So I'm stood there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure yeah. I did. Pulled the anki off. It was an egg. Had an egg and I said, oh, it hasn't been born yet. That's brilliant. They loved it. They, yeah. Yeah. It was wild for it, did they? Round of applause. Yeah. How uh, old were you? Was, was that you like was, 17? Was that, apart from the, apart from your paper round, was that the high point of your life so far? 
Uh, is that the, what's the no, best? I think it didn't really Carl, I'd like to see you take that on the road. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe at least up to the Edinburgh Festival next year. <laughs> Carl, we'll, we'll play a song now, right? One of my, f a great track, Watch That Man, off one of my favourite albums, A Love Insane by David Bowie. But, during that, can, can you, can you think of a couple of things for me? What's the best thing that's ever happened to you? Can you, can you think about that for three minutes? Me and Steve will leave you alone. Just the best thing that's ever happened to you. Remember and think that is amazing. Yeah, can you do that? Play the right. Play Watch that man. David Bowie. Steve's caught unaware there, just wandering around, not quite ready, were you? Well, no, I'm just relaxing, you know, I'm just yeah. laid back, just hanging. Yeah, Carl. Yeah. Best thing that's ever happened to you. Best event, best day in your life. I mean, there's, there's loads of things that happen. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. no, but do you know what I mean? You can go for obvious stuff like, you know, meeting Suzanne, speaking yeah. with her and having well, a nice take, take that, take that as red. Yeah. 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 You've got that on your design, and that's already yeah. done. Well, uh... And the day you, you know, you got your qualifications through. Yeah, the history. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, probably... I mean, when you asked me then, the first thing that came into my mind, right, that was a real surprise, right, because it's like, you, you get surprises on your birthday and that, don't you? Mm. But they're not really surprises, because you're hassling your mum and dad for stuff, yeah. and then they, you know, they might bite you. Yeah, so it's not yeah. really a real surprise, is it? Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh... So I'd say something that was really like, oh yeah, nice one, I've got something here, is the time when <laughs> my dad said, empty the bin, will you, right? <laughs> I said, oh, do we have to? And I, I was watching something, it was like, why don't you, or something like that on yeah. the telly. Is this right? what started your tea bag and banana skin collection? <laughs> right. So it was like, you know, in the summer holidays where you'd have dead good telly in the morning, you had like, yeah. uh, the monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was banana like, splits. Don't you, banana splits yeah, and yeah. all that, right? And I was like, loving that, I was watching that, I mean, I said, empty the bin. I said, oh, the monkeys are on in a minute. He said, well, just empty the bin. So I emptied it and I just put it near the door. He said, don't leave it there. He said, stick it near the bins in the garden. I was like, I'll, I'll put it there later. He said, no, do it now. Yeah. Right? So I was like, oh, if I miss the beginning of this, I'll be livid. Be right? Livid. So I picked it up quick, ran out down to the bottom of the garden, slung it in the corner, and sort of went to turn back to go back in and had to look again because they had like a little AA truck. They Eat bought one. me, th it wasn't brand new, but he'd got it from somewhere, a little AA go-kart, do you know one of them, like, little things that, I mean, I was, I was young. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it was, was like- a go-kart? What kind of, you know, the plastic ones? Yeah. When you're about, uh, I don't know, I must have been like five or six or something. So I don't quite follow, the, 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 so he sent dad, you out there? My dad sent, sent me out with a bin bag so yeah. I could see, so like, could what see he'd got thing. me. And yeah. it wasn't my birthday or anything, he just got it from somewhere. You sure you hadn't just nicked it and dumped it out the bag? Possibly. Sure. But, uh, that, that was a, like a genuine, like, oh, yeah, smart. Yeah. So I went back in, watched the telly and yeah, that for a bit and went back out. You thought, so I, did, I tell, back did out. I tell you about my go-kart? Yeah, like you... Yeah. About your dad giving it away. Yeah. What's the story? I don't, I've, I've, I've told you something. Have you gone? What, well, tell it again? Well, uh, uh, have I told it on air? I can't remember, maybe I just told you it. Um, when I was about eight or nine, I had a go-kart and I loved it. It was one of those things you press back and forth. Yes. And I used to come in every day, used to just get changed, run out, and it was, um, behind the shed, and I used to just go up and down the garden. And one day I came running in, and I ran out, and I couldn't see it. And I went out to the back door, my mum was washing up, and I went, where's my go-kart? She went, your dad swapped it. Your dad swapped it? Yeah. With his, it was, it was his mate, Jimmy, in the pub. He went, it's just, I said, what's, ah. Oh. She went, yeah, he swapped it for a wheelbarrow. So I went and looked back and there was this wheelbarrow, right, <laughs> that was obviously just came off a building site. Yeah. Covered in concrete. Oh, I couldn't, it was steel, right, Ch I could hardly move it. Yeah. And I went back and I went, really? She went, yeah, it's your wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm thinking so that my dad lost the wheelbarrow that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I used to, I used to push that up and down, it wasn't the same. And you used then, to push the wheelbarrow up yeah, and down? Anything I mean, in there or? No, I just like, to try, I was just trying to sort of keep myself amused. Yeah. But anyway, that summer, I went on holiday. And uh, I went to Bognor with my mum and my nan. Um, <laughs> Another wild holiday. Yeah, yeah. And now I was sort of out, out by my caravan, and I'm, I made friends uh, with this this kid, and he'd hired a go kart from the the caravan, so right. And I remember him going around it, and uh, I was it, was it was great. And I said, <laughs> and I said, I've got a go kart. <laughs> and the caravan window opened, and my mum said, "Don't lie." <laughs> You've uh, got a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Be truthful. 
<laughs> I went, I had a go-kart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. Well, Did you ever really forgive him for that? I'd never forgive him, my dad, if he'd swapped a go-kart for a wheelbarrow. I just thought that's par for the course. Yeah. It? You know what I mean? He's yeah. They're in charge. Sure. Did you used to rush home, change and... <laughs> 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 yeah. Into that sort of gardener's gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Straight into your hard hat and dungarees. I go, Mum, any bricks need moving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh dear. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Still, that was your happiest day. Yeah. Beautiful car. That's, that's, that's the one that sprung to mind. Yeah. Yeah, and my, un my unhappiest. You see how, how go-karts can be good or bad? <laughs> Does that make you think, Carl, that yeah. the go-kart is, you know, is good and evil? <laughs> yeah. Play a record. Oh, I'm upset. Abs. Huh? So, so oh, I'm pretty, what ads have you got? <laughs> I've got these. <laughs> Electric Soft Parade, same way every day on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais. Within Steve Merchant. Sure. Rick, I, um, I only had one thing I had to do all week. Okay. Was that? I only had, to, I was, all week I was so excited about getting up Friday morning, phoning, getting Bruce Springsteen oh, tickets. Oh, yeah. The boss is playing in, yeah. uh, in yeah. October. And basically got up too late. Well, I've not sold out already, you just sold out, it. it had sold out, but I've started calling about 12.30, it sold out. I trawled the net, I trawled, uh, all yeah, the phone lines. Yeah, but a lot of, yeah, some of those buys are bulk buys for selling on, aren't they? They're not all this individual. Is the this they, is the problem. So I mean, I don't know how many people they you know, can fit in Wembley Arena, but sold out by 12.30, and that's popular. Wembley Arena? Yeah. It's about 12,000, isn't it? I was so gutted. It was all I had to do. I was so looking forward to it. I phoned up one of those, like, do quite dodgy ticket agencies. Do you know how much he was offering to, you know, they're like, they're 45 quid to buy. Mm -hmm. Said the starting price is two hundred and twenty-five quid. I mean, that to me is like a ticket tout, like a legal ticket tout. Are they allowed to do that? I don't know. It's crazy. I was so they angry. Could make, is that, they could They'd have to say their booking fee was one hundred and fifty yeah, pounds. Exactly. So I, but now I'm just, I'm like desperate. I don't know what to do. I'm just wondering if I can abuse our position on the radio and just try and scrounge them from anyone <laughs> who's listening. No, I mean anyone who's listening who's got the power to get them, you know, or. This is begging, or, isn't it? It's, 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 it's exactly what it is, Rick, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna try and dress it up. Yeah. But it's just begging. That I'm just. Ticket touts after you as well. For exactly. Dissing him. Ricky. Gervais don't at bring me into it. Shut up. Ricky. Gervais at xfm.co.uk. If there's anything you can do to get me a ticket, I'm willing to pay for it. Um, up to the price oh, of 45 thing. quid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wow. No, the second ad. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You don't, you don't want to yeah. throw your money I'll around, Steve. I'll 25 quid, come on. <laughs> don't you know yeah. who I am? Yeah. But, um, but that, I mean, do you know what I mean? Because I'm just, like, I asked Carl if he could sort it out. He's done nothing. He's achieved nothing. I know. So I'm just desperate. I'm in a desperate situation and I don't quite know what to do. <laughs> I'll tell you this though, Carl. D don't bother doing favours for him because he's not grateful. You give him something and he goes, right, does this mean I have to give you something back? And I go, well, no. He goes, good. <laughs> well, I got your cure tickets and you did nothing yeah, but whinge about rubbish, it. that gig. There you go, It then. was rubbish. I went along to that gig, it was a balmy summer's night. The cure, as far as I'm concerned, owed me a balmy summer's night because I wasted it. Hour and a half they played for, they played four hits. I don't want to hear their dirge from like some dodgy album and from like 1984. I'm not interested. Play the hits. Boys don't cry. Love cats, blah, 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 blah. Instead I got nothing. I was so angry. I was, I was just, oh man, I was You were so probably angry. angry at Carl, weren't you? I was angry at Carl for wasting my time getting yeah. me the tickets for free. I mean, if I Carl? paid for it, are you getting to, you get to see living. what sort of a bloke Steve Merchant is? Mm -hmm. No, it's not the point. Do you not agree though? If you're going to go and see a band like The Cure on a summer's night, yeah. Hyde Park, you do not want to hear some obscure, obscure B-sides and album tracks. But that, that's what—that was a great thing about when well, when I saw Bowie at the BBC. He played. Well, you what? He, you know about that? I don't know about this. Yeah, you do. What? When did you see Bowie? Uh, the Jonathan Ross recording. Oh, well, you're sure of his friend Jonathan Ross? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. was this? Was that that TV thing he did? Yeah. You went to that? You haven't told me about this. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. But you were away, I think. No, I wasn't. Because I watched it on TV. <laughs> it was amazing. Well, don't tell me that. It was incredible. Were you seriously there? Yeah. And then, then I went on to a show on the Saturday. Cause did he, you? Yeah. Because I was just around John said, oh, I need someone to come in. Yeah. And I went on to the radio show. So TV you were show. hanging out with Bowie? Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Go on. Who else was there? <laughs> well, the weird thing Shall was. Shall I go through my favourite artists and you just name <laughs> them and see if, if they were there? Just let me know. <laughs> no, but it was amazing, right? Because he started. He played um, uh, just doing local. Because it, it was that. Um, it was the meltdown thing, and he did uh, be my wife, which was great. Then he started doing fame. Right, and they'd been talking about Ziggy in the, um, the interview. He was going, oh, everyone goes on Ziggy, will you just stop it, right? And it was sort of like, got to a point where he was going, oh, do it. And it was really funny, and, uh, uh but Jonathan's like a favourite phase with that, right? And then he started playing, um, Fame. And it was really good, and he just went, stop this, stop this. This isn't, uh, this, uh, 
let's do Ziggy. And oh. a sp uh, my spine tingled. I was worried. And he did Ziggy Stardust, and I'll tell you what, it sounded like the album version. And it's got an amazing band, and it was, and I love it when they do that. They know, I hate it when they've, just because they've been going for 25 years, they start changing Sorry, it. Sorry, I can't believe that you went to this, that you knew you were going to this, and you never asked me, you never asked Jonathan if you could get me in. I mean, seriously, I, w I mean, you know how much that would have meant. Yeah, to but me. it was very tight. Apparently, I, I know, but it was very, very, it was very sort of. Apparently, Richard uh, Branson couldn't get in. There was a queue, so I was like, especially it was. There was me, me and Jane went. Um, uh, D David Bedil and uh, Frank Skinner. Oh, what, some new showbiz friends of yours? <laughs> no, they? no, I mean that we. <laughs> I'm rubbing it in, Steve. I, know. I can't. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> but you might not have liked it. You might have complained like Carl got you the you... cure, and you 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 turned that it back. That was rubbish, it. though. That was rubbish. Well, you might not have liked what David did. You know, I'll I'd tell you like, this seriously. If if I find out that you do the, that you've gone to some secret gig or something in the future, and I find out you've been seriously, that's it. There's no more office. There's no more. No, no I'm not joking. I'm not mucking around because that to me is like that's what friendship is. That's like a textbook example of friendship. What do you think, Carl? Uh, no, I just think that's no, really off. No, you I were away. Really you were, you, you were no, I wasn't away. Yeah, you were, yeah. I wasn't away. Don't try and fool me. Yeah. I wouldn't have been away if I was away. I wouldn't have been away. You if were you told asleep. Me that was happening. You were asleep. I'm. I, I'm seriously. I'm. You can. We can joke about it, but I'm really angry about this. What do you think, Carl? There's a secret, right? There's a, apparently there's a secret Bruce Springsteen gig that's been planned. I'm going. It's all, are you? I, if you, seriously, if you, <laughs> but seriously, if you, if, if I find out you're at that, oh, I will, I mean. Oh, dear. To play a record so I can shout expletives and we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I, I tell you what, a lovely bit of electronic. Oh. Just to cook, uh, calm and, and soothe me. I'm just, seriously, I'm not joking, that really winds me up. That yes. really winds me up. The cure was good. <sighs> Electronic, getting away with it. Nice to hear that again, Rick. Yeah, lovely. Love all that. Love all that. Someone's well, just, uh, You've had a bit of result, haven't you? Well, no, there's a guy who's phoned out who said he might be able to sort me out with the Springsteen ticket, so <laughs> deeply excited about that. But, yeah. you know, people don't, uh, don't get, don't get for complacent. <laughs> you he might not be Steve, able to. Steve demands a lot of hard work. Well, eh? he, he might not be able to sort it out. You know, he's going to make some calls, but, uh, if he can't, then, you know, keep calling or emailing, uh, uh Ricky Dot You'll be taking me, won't you? Because I was after yeah. that rant about me not taking you. Well, you're welcome to go. I mean, if- but if you told me that before, I probably could have blagged some using your name. <laughs> if you let me do that, I could have phoned out the promoter. Uh, oh, I'm calling on about uh, Ricky Gervais, back oh, the winner. Oh dear. He'd have probably, uh, uh, sort of me right out. But yeah, no, I mean, you know, we- we- joking aside, mm. it is quite serious. And, um, as I said, I don't- I don't want to pay through the nose for him, you know, I'm willing to go up to sort of 47 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> they cost like, like, five face Like, values, like so. that- that Steve trying to impress a girl in a queue, yeah. offered the bouncer two quid for himself, if yeah. he could go to the front oh, of the Oh man, that was so embarrassing. Two quid! I tried to bribe- did I tell you that guy? I tried to bribe the, uh, bouncer, he was coming out, he was just- he thought he was really- he thought he was in total- he was- he was like the- the bouncer of the Met Club, or the, the Met Bar or something. Ten him in! He was choosing. No, he wasn't. He was picking people off, right? I, yeah. That was it. He was picking people off, and he was going, "You, you can come in. You can come in." I got chained to a couple of girls. I thought, oh, "I'm in. I'm in here. I'm sorry, dear." Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I thought, I'll, I'll, "I'll act flash. I'll try and bribe my way into the club." I, the guy was walking past. I cornered him. I went, "We, how much did it go in?" He said, uh, "Fiver." I went, "I'll give you seven. <laughs> <laughs> and two pounds. I thought, because the problem I had was I didn't want to go straight to like a tenner. No. Because if he accepted seven, I didn't want to be down. No. I didn't want to waste no, the money. Right, so I thought, Steve. I thought right, we Steve. could at least haggle. It was the term. Is that frugal? What is the term for that? Thrifty? I know. Um, no, I, but I'm resenting this because you are trying to create this kind of this lies, this myth that I'm somehow, you know, like that I'm somehow cheating careful. my money yeah. or that I'm not a great lover. <laughs> You know what I mean? And that's sort of, I'm like, it's annoying me. Uh, frankly. Oh, so, uh, dear. Um, Carl, you went to, uh, Habitat this week, didn't you? You're not gonna believe this, Steve. Go on. They told me this, a bargain. No. Do you know how I told you about those, um, <laughs> those lads at school with big heads? Sure, yeah, the big head lads, yeah. Right. <laughs> and the web um, feet. Yeah, well, web dams. Web dams, was it? Um, they weren't um, there, were they? They weren't there, but do you know, like, Ricky was always saying, oh, they don't exist, they only went to your school, you know, yeah. la la la. It was in Habitat, there was only one, one sat on a sofa. <laughs> Not one of the lads, but one of the- one A big-headed lad. A big-headed lad. What? Is that like- I really say a big-headed lad, is he like Frank Sidebottom? <laughs> big head? I mean, is it like- Well, he doesn't it? know what it- this is why- you know, it, it'd is be nice to- You think it's maybe a medical- Well, it'd be nice to, if there's a doctor listening, sure. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a doctor <laughs> listening to XFM thinking, I must phone up and fuel Carl's obsession with the yeah. deformed. Yeah. No, but it's not really deformed, but it was how just- how big is the head? Probably, you see, it's weird how it's always kids who I see with it, so I'm wondering whether- 
the they grow into the head. Size head. Right, and yeah. then the, when they get older, <laughs> it works out all right. Like jumpers. My mum used to get me to put jumpers a size too big yeah. so it'd last a year. So, I'm just wondering if it's the same so size. how old are these generally? Are they not like adults? They're like kids, Well, when they? I was at school there, I was probably about seven and this kid on And do they have to wear Sunday. any kind of apparatus to sort of keep their head from kind of, you know, uh, not tipping them over or sort of staying well, like upright? I mean, he's, he's, well, I'm just worried that the head's kind of too heavy for their body or something in there. No, it's, I mean, it's not that big. Right. It's, uh... It's just not right. You kind of go, you, you sort of do a bit of a double take. Yeah. yeah. Um, like the fringe isn't sort of, you know, just above their eyes. It's quite high up. Sure. Um, yeah. that sickens you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and is it something that repulses you slightly? Do you get No, 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 no. That's, that'd be cruel. No, sure. But, yeah. uh, but, you know. But it's not cruel to discuss it on the radio. Well, it happens, sure. right? Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I'd just like to know what it is. If it's like a. Like a, a water on the head type <coughs> A thing. water on the head type thing. Like water on the knee, yeah. but on the head. on the head. But, uh, yeah, if anyone knows what it is. Yeah. People uh, with big heads. Yeah, it'd be, uh... And it's, yeah, okay. It'd be good. Good information. So, what time are we doing? Are you sure it was perspective? Are you sure he wasn't sort of, um, sort of leaning forward and he was really tall? So the top of his, the, the head looked quite big, but then it went to a little body. But really, his body was a lot further no, away. No big head. Yeah. Yeah. Just a big head. The uh, rest of his body fine. Face okay. Everything's normal. You were looking at him in a kettle. If you wore a hat, <laughs> it'd be all right. But what yeah. do you mean? If you wore a hat, he'd be all right. You'd probably just think, oh, it's a big hat. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what sort of hat? So you would wear like a ten gallon hat. Yeah, with, that, with that would go down onto his shoulders with two eyes cut in yeah. it. Yeah, like something like, like the Ant Hill mob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Michael Benteen's potty time. Oh, yeah. How would a hat help him? Yeah. I'm Are you sure this wasn't a Diddy man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's I'm not being mean, I just want to no. know what it is. No. Okay. Right. Well, right. if you are a doctor listening and you, and you, you know, you want to use your kind of free Saturday Not the doctor wait. who phoned the bloke in America and said, where do I get blood from? Sure. Not that doctor, because yeah. I assume he's been struck off now, given- Sure. Give us a call and, and sort out the, the whole big head conundrum. What's the number? Uh, oh, eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. That's also the number to call if you have Bruce Springsteen tickets available. Uh, I will pay up to forty seven. Don't pounds. do it. Go yourself. Don't give them to Steve for cost price. Make a little profit. Oh, come I mean, on, don't take the mickey. Don't me. You know what I feel, you've already ruined the uh, I think. Don't ruin but, some more of my dreams. But I'll tell you what, if you do get Steve, um, a ticket, he'll be so grateful that he will spend a bit of money on you, I imagine. <laughs> exactly. You'll buy the tickets and, you know, give him something pretty special because you're earning now and, you know. Yeah. So yeah let me discuss that with them. <laughs> I mean, let's not make any promises. <laughs> yeah. You're in the middle of a phone call there, aren't you? Is that, still, is that poor bloke still on the line? Probably not, no, he's, he's gone. Oh, is he? Yeah, oh, he was in the middle of summer. White stripes, though. Yeah. Dead leaves and the dirty ground. Steve, what are you doing? Sorry, mate, I'm just, uh, sort of preoccupied with other stuff. I've got the whole Springsteen thing I'm worried about. I've got that playing on my mind. I've never seen Steve so worried. Like, it, usually he just he sits there I'm with his head. Thank you, Rick. I've made promises to people that I can't keep. <laughs> <laughs> I've promised about three different people I'm getting them tickets. <laughs> well, 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 it's just right. some calls, Rick. That's all. <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Are we doing the game in this hour or what? Oh, we could do. Should we do that? Your game. Well, what was that thing you told me the, the other day as well, of talking about it? People have been phoning up about this. I don't think we should talk about conditions of the mind and brain. Well, that woman's but, put you right. Yeah, show us. It's uh, hydrocephalus, it could be. And uh, all it is is that it's, it, it's totally curable and it's, it's normal life. What they do is it's a baby born with sort of water on the brain and it comes out. Must hurt a bit in childbirth. And then they just uh, drain it off. It's just full of water. I tell you what. What? Just reminded me of what? weird stuff going on in the but world. But it was a baby, was it? This was a- maybe it was a baby. Maybe it was- or maybe it was a baby, but it had water on the everything. Well, listen, right, I don't- I, this was a kid with a big head, as far as I'm concerned. He wasn't a baby. Go but on. we know what he's got, everything's sorted. But other things, right, <laughs> that are weird in the world- Yeah, You know, on, you're Carl. always like, um, yeah. you're going on about, uh, there's no ghosts and stuff. Yeah. Right? How do you answer this one? Yeah. Someone here who I work with, yep. right? I'm not going to say the because it doesn't matter. <laughs> but they were eating uh, space cake, right? What do you mean by that, Carl? Explain. What's for, a space cake for people who? It's so. some it's some sort of druggy cake, isn't it? Yeah. Right. A dope brownie or whatever. Yeah. Right. So so so, so with cannabis in it. Is that what you're saying? I think it's something stronger than that, isn't it? 
I don't know. But Come anyway, he was having this space cake, and- I, you, you better give me the name now, Carl, cause I've got to report him. <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> it's only, no, 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 no. It, it really it doesn't matter. No. Is he Sturgis? <laughs> was it Claire Sturgis? Yeah, she Let's wouldn't bother. She's, she's gone on the hard. She doesn't bother me. She doesn't do anything to her now. to the vein, yeah. <laughs> so listen, yeah. right, so he's at a party, right, yeah. with his mates, mm. and they're listening to, um, the, uh, Star Sailor album, uh -huh. right? Right. And, uh, he's sat there, and he's had some of this cake. Yeah. Right. And, uh, he's listening to the album, and his mates sat across the way, talking to someone else. Hmm. Right? That's weird. The album's on, mm. and he thinks to himself, this track's going on a bit. Yeah. yeah. And his mate across the way, who's talking to someone else, heard him say it. Heard him say it, and he goes, Yeah. He goes, Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So he goes, Oh. Right. And he goes, See, usually at this point, I say had this bloke taken drugs, but you started the story <laughs> yeah. with this bloke. No, 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 no. Had done some drugs. Since, right, Rick. No, he, if he if he was here now, yeah, right, he would say, yeah, I know. I think it sounds. I know it sounds mental. Yeah, but it happened. And yeah. it wasn't just a one question, it wasn't just like, oh, this track's a bit long, in it? Yeah, it is. He had a it whole was conversation. A whole conversation sure. with the guy. And yeah. what, and but sorry, I, I just want to clarify, you mean he had the whole conversation telepathically? Yeah. Right. And he didn't just shout across and the And they've recently met up and, like, they've sat there and, and tried to, like, work out mm. what happened. Mm. And it's Without not about presumably they don't have to talk at all anymore. <laughs> yeah. Why did they meet up? Couldn't they just start <laughs> like, <laughs> never <been> home? <laughs> Do, home, they, do they have to have that cake before they yeah, start having a chance. conversation? Hold on, wait a minute, lads. Why are we using our lips? Yeah. This is using way too many for- I'll take them. There you go. <laughs> my, my only question with that is, uh, being skeptics like Ricky and I, whenever we hear a story like that about the paranormal, the first thing we always look for is maybe some- maybe some other explanation. Yeah. Maybe one vague idea. Lying? Could be lying. Uh, Chinese or whisper. As, 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 as I think you pointed out, there are drugs. It's often, drugs. Uh, it's often drugs. an issue. As Madness, well. yeah. fear, delusion, mm. Mm. sleep. Yeah. You know, there, 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 are, there are there are so many things you go through. I'm going to go with the drugs <laughs> before your dead grandmother <laughs> exactly. pops into the equation. I'm going to go with the acid. Right, tell the other story that you totally you totally believe this as a true story, don't you? The fellow with the the um, being killed. Right, do you know how the other week we were talking about some fella who had his head cut off? And he said, uh, when my head goes into, into the basket, I'm gonna blink a lot. See how many times I can blink. But if you remember, when Carl first told me that, it was, uh, um, I think it was Simon or, um, uh, Nick that had to point it out. He goes, no, that's not quite right, Carl. Carl told me it, that he had his head cut off, and when his head was in the basket, it looked up and said, count how many times I blink. <laughs> yeah, but sure. he believed that as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he was yeah, happy, yeah. he was happy with that. Sure. Do you know Sorry, what I mean? So, so, yeah, you'd got a couple of weeks ago, there was a guy, he had his head cut off, and before he had it off, he'd said, I'm gonna blink to show yeah. that there's life after death. I mean, and he, he, did, he did 32 blinks, yeah, right? Sure. So, you two were sort of pointing that down the other yeah, week. We were skeptical, so, yeah. I looked again on the internet. As some other website. Mm. Yeah. And there's a. Guy Sorry, it's the website, just to clarify, the website is the place where you bought that property on the moon, didn't you? Because it was a bargain. <laughs> right. So, um, <laughs> this guy. Fingers umped. <laughs> Look, we'll see who's been gazumped when then when this world ends, I've yeah. got somewhere to go, yeah. right? And I know you'll be calling me up, saying, oh, can I come with you? Have you got like a few squares? Squares? <laughs> no. no, I've got acres. You're gonna have to about stand about <laughs> deadly still on the moon <laughs> in your two square foot. I've got about There's 20 no acres. There's no place for Suzanne, it'll just yeah. be you. Twelve it's off, it, love. It's, well, all, it's all those people with big heads and web feet that have been buying it all these years. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, right. right. Go on. Anyway. Play a record, tell us a story after it. We've been chatting for a Sorry, Carl, no, there's no record. Play a tune, we'll come back with this. What's this, another ghost story? No, oh, no, let's play my, one of my favourite songs of all time. I'm going on holiday and getting into a lovely, serene move. Serene Sorrento is probably from that. Uh, it's Neil Young, After the Gold Rush. Beautiful. Still to come, that competition as well. Look forward to that. Carl's Quiz. Yeah. What an amazing track Beautiful that is. Team, yeah. Neil Young, Dynamite. After the Gold Rush. So go on, Carl. Sorry. Go on, Carl. So let's take us back a few steps, Carl. What, what's, what's the story? Right, so I did some research. Right. <laughs> let, let's just recap again. The guy, there was a guy you read about who had his head chopped off. He was guillotined. Yeah. He had said to the people around him, Count I am blinks. going to blink once I've had my head cut off to so show the brain can still. Or the brain yeah. can continue to work after, yeah. after yeah. death. Okay, so yeah, we queried that. So you, you weren't having any of it? Well, no, possibly for a few seconds till the, the oxygen stops being fed to the cells because the blood has drained away. But, you know, no, nothing spectacular. So right, go on. Along the similar sort of lines, right? This is quite a few years. Years ago, um, this fella sort of upset the royal family doing something. 
right? Uh -huh. So they said, uh, this isn't good. It wasn't Ben Outen at that Jubilee thing, was I it? Can't, was I can't remember what it was, and they said, right, <laughs> that we're, was terrible. we're gonna, uh, we're gonna cut your head off. Um, you oh. know, you gotta, you gotta show people like you can't be doing what you've been doing. What was this, the 1970s? <laughs> what, what did you say a couple of years ago? You mean maybe sort of... Was it the olden days when the phones weren't days. very good? Ages ago. Yeah. Ages ago, sure. So, um, so, so yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So... <laughs> very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, imagine that, yeah. when you were watching this going through. This was <laughs> literally <laughs> ages ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, go Simon Sharma's History of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, and even before that, which is young, <laughs> yeah. before, when it was all mental and different. <laughs> so, Sorry, Carl, go on. So he's having his head cut off and he's but he's resigned to it. It's, it's the day before, he's kind of got it into his head now that I'm not gonna have my head, uh, much longer. Sure. So he said, let's, let's make use of this. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> I wonder how long, like, the body can stay alive yeah. without my head on it, <laughs> right? <laughs> So they were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, Hoover. So the jailers, <laughs> whoever he was, the these jailers with one eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get that. Tongue. So he said, no, like, wait a minute, I've got an interesting scientific experiment, jailer. Well, yeah. fair enough. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he said, what I want to do, right? He said, um, you know, surely it's, it's my last right. You know, I'm going to mm. be, I'm going to be dead tomorrow. Sure. So um, let's. He do didn't a test. draw it out this long, did he? Yeah, he said, let, let's 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 test this out. You know, he said, do us a favour. He said, you know, it's my last day. Um, what I want you to do is, you're going to cut my head off. Let's put a white line on the floor, right, and see if you know, because there's no point asking how far he can sort of walk without an head if there isn't a line because you, you don't know what to count. Do you know what I mean? If it's just if he loses his head and he's running around all over the place, you can't yeah, really count. That's that. That's not impressive enough. Yeah. So so they said let's make a white line. Sure. Yeah. Who said this? He did all they did. I think they started to join in with him and say, well, let's make yeah. this a... You sure. Know. You get it. Go on. So, uh... <laughs> they got Norris McWord, uh, <laughs> The Guinness people. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So they said, let's get this white line. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... Dedication's all he needs. We'll, we'll do this. We'll do this tomorrow. And he said, all right, then. Yeah. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. So <laughs> <you> go, <laughs> Night night, sleep tight. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, I love the fact that God knows exactly what was said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He doesn't know the story yeah. or what order it's in yeah. or when but it he was. He knows exactly what was said. Or who said what, but he knows the intricacies. <laughs> All right then, see you in the morning. Mm, bye. Oh, kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not like that. Oh, you joker. Oh, don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, he gets up. Do you want a paper yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm alright. Go on. He gets up mm. and they say, right, you know, today's the day and that. And he said, well, you know, I've got, I've got used to the idea. So yeah. here's, here's a white line for you. <laughs> got used to the idea. <laughs> go on. So, uh, so they go, right, are you ready then? And he said, I go on. And they cut his head off. And the body walked 32 steps without a head. <laughs> wow. 32 steps. Incredible. And that's, that's, that's the lesson, really. Did it get as far as the, it walked along the white line, did it? Yeah, it stayed along the white line, did 32 steps, and then started to stumble a bit, and it just fell over. Yeah, yeah. But, it you know, it was it. a test that your body can still keep alive for a little bit. Yeah. When, when you've lost your head. Absolute twaddle. <laughs> Absolute twaddle. <laughs> what, what do you reckon you can do, then, without an head? Uh, how, how many steps? Nothing. There'd be muscular spasm, right? Yeah. It, it would twitch uh, a bit. It would, yeah. You could not distinctly take 32 steps. Mm -hmm. The body could- well, don't- Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it's yeah. the doctor to sit on the line. Yeah. The fellow that bought six parrots. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could have 32 steps. Right, so you don't believe that- doing a bit of line dancing. Right, you don't believe that, but something that you do believe that a cockroach can live a week without an head. It can. Hmm. Slightly different. Slightly different kettle of fish there. Why? Wow. Mm, insect to, uh, human <laughs> is, is, the, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that well, difference. There's not that much difference in well, some insects. Do you know that a snake has a heart and lungs and kidneys and stuff? Go on. No, well, I'm just saying. So? You're making out as if like, they're a totally different, like, species. <laughs> I am. I am making that. I mean, call Rick, me old-fashioned. Do you know what you're talking about? Rick? I don't want you embarrassing yourself, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I am suggesting they're totally different beings. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, now, Carl, uh, the, the the cockroach is is a very different thing. The interesting there is that it lives. It lives by its head because a lot of it's on. Uh, 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 there's some of them are phototropic, chemotropic. Some of them just do literally have uh, irritation and muscle memory. I mean, they do have a central nervous system, but it, it, it's it's very different. So if you lose the head, it bypasses a lot of that anyway. All this is running around. The reason it dies is because it can't take on water. But it's very different to a man, <laughs> right, having consciousness and then losing that 
and the body's still going, now I remember, I think I remember what I was gonna do here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna call carefully call walk 32 line. steps along this white line. I imagine just looking down going, oh, missed a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe the head was in the corner going, left, <laughs> yeah. left, you <laughs> left, oh, he's not, ooh. Well, let's just put it out. I mean, if, if, if anyone listening has, uh, has maybe had a relative <laughs> beheaded, maybe in a hor horrendous car accident, <laughs> where they got up, maybe they, they went for a walk, uh, they, you know, they, they, they had a little chat before oh, they passed dear, on. Oh, dear Carl. Get in touch. You know, oh, you, Carl, you, know you, you, you are my favourite being. You are my favourite species. Now, you, Carl, may not be particularly different genetically <laughs> from a cockroach. <laughs> you are, generally Why can cockroaches speaking. do that? Why whoever made them went? Let's play a record. Well, do, do you know what, what I told him this fact? I send him little facts on text messages just to inflame his, you know, interest. I just sent him a cockroach can live nine days without his head. Mm. He texted back, what's the point of that? Yeah. What's the point of They're that? They're not doing experiments, these cockroaches. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, a, it's a boring last week to have. <laughs> <laughs> And he went, on top of all that, you're thirsty. <laughs> so yeah. it's the worst week of your life, isn't it? That week without your head. Play a record. Play a record, Carl. Competition time next. Oh. 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 He's oh. Look at his little face. Oh, Look at his little face. He's not in his class competition. <laughs> oh. oh. We can do without an head. Eminem. Bit late there, weren't you, Carl? Put your little headphones on. Cleaning out my closet. What are you doing? I've got to stuff her face with, um, toilet paper. Oh. Do the, do the competition. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know, we, when we were writing the, sh the TV show, um, I was filming it just for our own amusement, just to sort of, uh, I suppose more as a document, really, so that if there was ever, a, you know, a court of, court of law that needed, uh, evidence of Ricky Gervais's, I don't know what it is, really, sickness, annoyance. He did this for about two hours. He, you see what he's doing now? He's stuffing his face with toilet roll. Yeah. Um, and twisting the lips out so I can just show your teeth. Yeah. You know, that actually makes me want to be sick. I know. <laughs> yeah, so he gag a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Good. Well, while Ricky does that, Carl, it's time for your quiz. See, this is like if this is on telly. Right. An example. You have to be quiet, or you've got to take that toilet paper out of your okay. I'm really serious because it's right. really annoying. Okay. You're going to be quiet. Yeah. Right. An example <laughs> of the game, just in case people didn't hear the launch of it last week. Um, it's it's a song title. Um, I tell a little story, and that song and that little story is. Uh, uh, a song, innit? Yeah. Right, so, um, say for example, um... What did we do last week? What did we do last oh, week? Oh, the woman who, uh... Oh yeah, a woman who really wants to, um, like, have a bath because she stinks. Yeah. But she can't because if she had a bath or a shower or a wash or whatever, she'd end up killing herself. Yes. No, right? you didn't say that. What? You didn't say she'd end up killing herself. Well, anyway, as an example, that would be one of the stories. Yeah, she's the electric, answer, yeah. The answer there is well, she's, she's electric. Yeah, can't she couldn't have a shower because she would have ended up killing herself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So this week's then, and don't say it if you know it because the idea is that people can... Oh, right. Up, right. Um, there's this bloke and he... He, he buys a new house, mm -hmm. right? And he's well happy with it. His, his girlfriend moves in with him and stuff, and she says, "Right, uh, you know, let's uh, let's let's clean it up a bit." Yeah. And uh, you know, straight away it'll be worth more money. Uh -huh, good idea. Mm -hmm. So she, he says, "Right, you do the kitchen, and I'll do upstairs and that." And she's stripping the kitchen down, and uh, he goes upstairs, and he's in the bedroom and notices a uh, little little hole to the attic. Oh right, brilliant. Right. So he goes, oh, I wonder how much room's up there, you know, yeah. I've never weighed it up. So he goes up there and it's all like dusty and a mess. And he goes, this could make a good bedroom, this. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he starts cleaning it all out, puts all the rubbish, like, bins the rubbish straight away and there's little boxes with bits in that don't oh. belong to him. I wonder what's in here, yeah. right? So he opens one of the boxes, there's like a little lamp. Oh, right. right. He goes, this might be worth a few quid, yeah. right? And he rubs it. Magic lamp. And all like, all the room goes all sparkly and stuff. And he goes, oh, what's going on? And then this fella appears, right? In a nice sort of, uh, <laughs> in a nice sort of, uh, pair of 501s. Right. And he says, what do you want? I know already. So all the, all the first bit is irrelevant. Yeah, but it's about building the story, isn't it? So don't say anything. If you think you know it, Steve, yeah. do you know it? I don't. So I just right. quickly recap the end there. I, I almost missed the end. Oh so God. there you go. He's in. He's in the attic. Right. Yeah. His missus is still downstairs. She's not up there. Okay. Right. He's on his own, and he cleans this lamp. Right. Yeah. And this this fella appears out of all this smoke, and he's wearing a nice pair of five oh ones, and he's wearing a shirt, and. Uh, there you go. What's 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 the song? What song are you thinking of? The lines are going mental. Because it's going so live. easy. 
Let's let's play a record, Carl. We'll come back and we'll and we'll find out if anyone's got that right. That's a great one, Carl. Really. All right. Did you just come up with that? Literally in the last ten yeah. minutes. Genius. <laughs> this is genius. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> if those calls are from major TV companies, <laughs> I don't know. It's. It, I mean, dynamite stuff. A lot of them are. What's his name's lawyer? Simon yeah, Mayer. Simon Mayer. That's my favourite thing I've done for years. Yeah, not bad, not bad. That's great. Back to form there. So, uh, yeah, okay, lines. The, the lines are going mental just because it's easy. Go on then. So I first want to get it. You first want to get it, but... Well, it's not that, though, Rick. I mean, uh, Carl has, has just decided to revise the actual rules of the competition. Yeah. So that, we've decided, is very easy. So that's now a qualifier. And so then I have to answer one live. Exactly. So whoever gets that one right can, can play for big money. Is it a quick one as well? Because some people will lose the will to live. <laughs> yeah. Just get a cut to the chase. And, uh, um, because they've got a qualify now, we're throwing an office DVD that I'm yeah, ready you'll yet. you'll that, you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that increases its value yeah. by 42 <laughs> pence. <laughs> right, right, go on. We'll just go live, yeah? Hello, XFM. Yeah, hi, how's it going? I'm um, not too bad. Not too bad. Can, um, a very, very quick recap, Carl, if you will, please, for the, uh, for the, for the people listening. Very quick. Right. Um, a man ends up in a loft. Man's, after moving into this house yeah. and that, yeah. uh, he's in the loft and he's tidying up. His missus is downstairs doing the kitchen because that needed doing. He's up there, he's cleaning up, emptying the boxes. He finds a little, like, a little... He rubs a lamp, a fella comes out wearing 501s. What's the song? <laughs> what, what's the song, mate? Are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. Well, look, look, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm sitting in this bar, right? I'm not ringing up relating to anything that's going on right now. I'm after one of these armbands to go and meet Bowie on Monday. Can you help me out? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Piss off. You can't say that to our public. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> people, I, what I can't bear is, is people begging, Rick, on the radio. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't bear it. Is that the Australian people bloke? He's got the British Bridge Bridge tickets. Hello, XFM. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are you phoning up for an armband? No, Gene no. Genie. Okay, great. Gene Genie, of course it is. <laughs> well done. Well done. Right, what, what's so your name? So, uh, everyone else can, uh, uh, ring off now, because, uh, this, this, uh... Well, she uh, might not take the challenge. <laughs> what, what's your name? <laughs> Which of you will. Hello? What's your name? Christina. Christina. Right, do you want to take on the challenge? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, right, well, so this is for... Yeah. She's already won a couple of CDs. This is for the Office DVD. Right. Okay. okay. Signed by Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So, this, this is the same game again, but mm -hmm. we're doing it live. Right? Okay. So, Good this is a song title. Right? Is this, um, there's this insect. <laughs> I'm loving it already. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's, uh, it's in its, it's in its little, like, nest. Mm hmm And all the other insects, all its mates and that, are really, like, working. They're grafting hard, they're tidying up. Some of them are going out, getting the food. Some of them have even got heads, they're still working. Some of them are, like, you know, rushing around. But there's this one insect who's just mm -hmm. sat there with its feet up. And it's like, you know, just doing nothing. It's annoying all the other ones, but it's sat the there. The Ricky bug. And it's, it's <laughs> sat there doing nothing, having a little, like, fag and that. What's the song? I don't know. Oh, oh. my God, I'm brainless. Um, I don't know, I don't know this either. So, obviously it's a type of insect, that's why you've avoided saying what it is. So it's, so it's something like lazy ant, lazy bee. Well, um, maybe we should throw it back open uh, to the oh, public. No, and I hope this, I hope this poor woman has called in and now got a stupid one. But Christina's lost it now. She's hasn't lost she? it. No, she's blown it, Rick. Oh, oh. sorry. It's only because you changed oh, the rules halfway through. Anyway. She's on this. She hasn't got a DVD player, so she's not bothered. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right. Cheers, Cheers Christina. Then, Christina. Bye. Bye. See you later. So, so we can uh, throw that back out then, can we? Well, yeah. I don't know. What, Is there anyone on the phone? Yeah, um, go on, take the next person. So what was it, there was some bugs, there was a bug and one of them wasn't doing any work? It's, it, it, oh, loads of them are working really hard. Sure. This one's just sat there doing oh, nothing, annoying them all, right? <laughs> so, XFM. God. Hello. 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 I'm clear to say, it's in Carl Perkinson's mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like him. Yeah. I like XFM. I like him. Hello? Hello. Oh yeah, is it, um, Animal Nitro, my slide? No, it's not. Good answer. It's a good answer. Is it a good answer? It doesn't well, make any sense, does it? <laughs> <laughs> it does, is it? I know, like yeah. Carl does. Yeah. Hello, yeah. XFM. Hello. Hello. Is it Ichiku Park? No, no. Ichiku Park. Bugs of it, shouldn't they? Yeah, sure. I think they're stabbing <laughs> the dark. They're, they're, starting to, they're starting to think like Carl, which <laughs> I like. Go on, next one. Hello, XFM. Hi, is it Scratch Pervert? No, it's not. Scratch Pervert, she's coming out of nowhere there. It's good. It's Let something me. to do with Lazy Bug, or Lazy Ant, or Hello, Lazy XFM. Bee. Hello. Hello. Hi, is it Beetle Bum? Excellent. Oh. Beetle Bum, of course. Beetle Bum by Blur. Sat around doing nothing, it's right, Bum. 
Okay, yeah. so I go in anything now. Well done. No, you don't. Yes, no. she does. She wins the office DVD. Take her name and address. <laughs> she doesn't, because she didn't do the qualifier. She knew it was Jean Genie. Oh, Cole, let someone win some. It's lads, painful lads, enough lads. listening to you for ten minutes. Lads, can Give we just away come down some from things? Lads, can we just come down from a moment? Once God. again, well, I just draw you to my point at the top of the show. When you were pissing about outside in the office, we could have been working through this. <laughs> yeah. We could have been figuring out the rules. What's her name? We could have had maybe some music, some jingles. Who's that? Who's that. What's, your, what's your name again? Yeah. Can we do this off air? Let's play oh, record. Yeah, no, he's not gonna give her an address out. We're rubbish. <laughs> this is we? so rubbish. We are really so, so rubbish. rubbish. So what's your name? D. 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 Right, right, okay, well, right. play a record and we'll get yeah. your address, D, and we'll send you some stuff. Thank you. Well, I Excellent. think you should right. cut right. it an hour early. You should sort this stuff out. <laughs> this is what I've been saying all along. I've been saying we should come in and do a bit of preparation. I've got things to do. Simon I... Mayo used to come in early. That was why he didn't have to sleep and eat breakfast. Come back around by Feeder on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and our producer there, I say producer, um, Carl Pilkington, alright? Alright. Yeah, we got, oh, we got to slicken up this thing. If we're gonna be as good as Mayo, we've got to, we've got to come in early and do the work. Yeah. Let's get in at ten to one next week. <laughs> we're not in it next week, are we? Uh, no, no, well, so, I mean, we would be, if it weren't for the fact so that what you, you need a holiday already. You've done three weeks, but yeah, you need a little rest. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it wasn't on holiday last time. I was working. Sure. Um, so what are you just gonna do a best of, are you? Yeah, just dig out some bits. And what are you gonna do? Just lump them together? Just, like, pick some, some favourite bits. Yeah. Right. And, uh, That'll fill up ten minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, well, do, music, do, do this then. Do the, do the, do the links then. So, well, why don't so, we do some sort of stock links now then? Okay then. <laughs> do you remember that, Steve? <laughs> oh, that was a great moment. Yeah, oh, great moment. I, I'll tell you what though, I love the bit when he, well, just play well, it. just play it. Right, so, so there's one. There. Oh, can you do, do a proper intro so it's like, you know, one of the, Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh uh, uh, so what, you know what song we're gonna come out of? Just say, just say generic, like, that's a good song. Well, let's, well, no, no, let's, uh, let's work out what it okay, 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 well, should, um, what do you want to start off with next week, then? Well, let's well let's give them a few options. Okay. Give them a couple of oh, options. Uh, that was a great track by Oasis. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Oasis there. Um, well, we're not actually here today, Steve. We recorded these last week. Uh, I'm on holiday. Um, what are you, you're just, you're just probably I'm chilling probably out. with a lady. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, oh, um, oh, leave me alone, stop phoning ladies. This you is like the, the best of, um, the best of, uh, last year. And we're gonna kick off with a, with a classic clip. Who can forget this? <laughs> <laughs> Alright? So like yeah. yeah, then just we weave that in. Yeah? And then it'll come out of that, come into a record or something. So I come out with another record? Just, yeah. just one more, just in case I need it. Okay. Um, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, that was Bob the Builder there. Shouldn't, oh. shouldn't really be playing that on XFM, but... Stupid car, stupid. <laughs> Don't know what you're <laughs> thinking, mate. You buffoon. Yeah, you uh, Oh, okay, I oh, know. Oh, no. oh, great track. I love that. Yeah, beautiful. Um, well, uh... <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't know with it. Yeah, no, come on, uh, let's get these right. He needs to use these uh, next okay. week. Okay. Um, another great oh, track... we'll just do this what? later. We're g I've got to go. I've got to run away. to the airport. Yeah. Yeah, but this isn't gonna work. It's a mess. Well, just... Oh, yeah, well, like that. Well, that'll be fine, then, for this show. <laughs> <laughs> it can slot right in, Carl. Yeah. I'm talking of a mess, mate. Your competition. Yeah. It was a shambles today. I mean, last week we gave it the benefit of the doubt because it was the first time we'd done it, but you've got to think it through, mate. You can't be making it up on the spot like that and changing the rules. Yeah. I'm sorry, mate. I mean, I know you did it with the best intentions, but it was it I was feel worried that people think we get at Carl and everything. Yeah. But, but that was a... appalling. Yeah, it was I mean, terrible. It was, and it was like, interminable. Gets, I think you've you got know, to compress those stories. You've gets, got to tighten them right He up. gets paid to be like 30 quid extra oh. for this as well. So, I mean, he's, he's getting good money. Well, yeah, well, for it. Listen, right, you say what? that you've got to compress it, right? I, uh, the way I look at like competition is like Columbo, right? <laughs> the murder bit at the end is done in like three minutes, but you drag it out for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so you sort of make it exciting and like, oh, I wonder where he's going with this. Sure. And it yeah. worked. You know, D, D Hudson, she's walking away with the DVD, she's like. <laughs> Are you, but Dee's fine. She's the only one who's gained. Everyone else has had a miserable time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah, of course she's happy. She's won something. But what about the listeners? There's yeah. no entertainment. Like, them, I mean, it? they're loving it now because me and Steve are on, and this is scintillating stuff. Yeah, this is dynamite. You know, stuff. this is amazing stuff. Talking about we're not going to be here next week and doing next week's links. Yeah, because I can't be bothered to come in early. Um, okay, there. Uh, wow, excellent. Um, well, it's uh, that's quarter to two, Steve, on XFM. I've enjoyed this wonderful collection of <laughs> our greatest moments. Yeah, there's still more to come. You'll be next back. Well, next week, won't you? Yeah. 
I'll be, I'll be back next week. I can do the last one. Well, I hope you enjoyed, um, some of the best of moments there with, uh. I'm not gonna use these. Why not? Well, they're a mess. Forget it. Forget it. Well, forget it. <laughs> we'll do them in a bit when you're done. I'm We've not. Ten minutes. I cannot do it. When's your plane? It doesn't matter when the plane is. I've we can do it in a bit. I'm definitely not. I'm, doing not, it, I'm not wasting my time going through that. Well, we'll, 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 so we'll, we'll waste our time. Right, right. We're getting it. My favourite suede song there, yeah? Stay Together. Bye, suede. Stay Together. <laughs> well done. Well done. Yeah. That's what you're being paid for. Well, no, because it could have been a suede song sung by Atomic Kitten. Sure. And like I said, that's my favourite suede song by Atomic Kitten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Thanks for that. Do you think this is the worst show we've ever done? Uh, no, I mean, we've done some god awful shows in the past. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, some real grim ones in the past. Okay. Do, do you think people see through it even before we tell them that we're not really cutting the mustard, yes. putting the effort in. We've got, we yes. had nothing to say last week. No, I don't think anyone's fooled. I think, really? I think people, some people are tolerating us because they quite like your TV work, but I mean, other than that, I think they And they haven't played good music. Well, I, we, don't, we, don't skim on the, we don't skim on the tunes. But I, if I was listening to this, I'd be thinking I could do a better job. I'd be livid if I worked in like some, if I worked in like a bakery or something <laughs> and I was like, I, I hate this job and I'm, and I'm listening to us, you know, gibbing about on the radio, I'd be livid, I'd be angry. Really? Yeah. I mean, but if this was a BBC show, I'd, I'd, oh, I'd go mental. Why? You know, Why like, well, BBC because I'd be paying a licence fee and everything, so oh, okay. it, would, it would feel like it was my money being squandered. But we'd have to At least this is advertisers' money being squandered. Yeah. You know, this is big corporations. Screw them. <laughs> yeah, and people they haven't paid anyway, have they? A lot of them haven't. They probably yeah. paid for the batteries in their radio. Maybe if they're just thinking We're still sorry about that. Yeah. Um, I, well, I feel guilty just for wasting their time, Rick. But next week's gonna be a clip show. Again! Yeah, there's gonna be a clip Carl's show. gonna do, we are decided that Carl's gonna just do the links next week yeah. by himself. Or maybe get a guest, a guest, uh, hosting, maybe a, uh, uh, you know, like, what was that, Dennis Norden? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Norden type. You know, um, in the Sony Awards, you hand in one show, don't you? Yeah. We could hand in next week's, couldn't we? Because it was broadcast in this year, just that it's a clip show from years ago. Yeah. You, you know, because you, you could hand in I Love 1975, couldn't you? In the BAFTAs or something. Yeah, you could. Yeah. So, yeah. should we, are you, are you, you're even bored, aren't you? You're bored with this show as well. This is terrible attitude. I'm just, it, I We're thought, allowed to be bored. We're the, we're the talent, I right? I thought you were gonna give us like ten minutes after the show to do them, but. I can't! I've got to go! Yeah. Right. Do you want to wrap it up, Steve, because Ricky's taxi might be waiting now, so... No, it's this, just... This attitude, Ricky, are you gonna put up with that? Don't you, know I, you are. I, I just don't believe it. They, uh, they should be chomping at the bit together. They, they should, I can't believe their luck. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure, sure. And uh, do I get treated any different? Yeah. No. Yeah. Worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Answers on a postcard if you can figure <laughs> out what that sentence meant. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be a DVD on its way to you. Listen, um, we had a, an email from Glenn and Sharon, and uh, Sharon was rushed into hospital last week, and they wanted us to play something for, uh, I think she's back now and she's okay, but, uh, but anyway, uh, they always listen to the show, they're big fans. They asked for some Nick Drake, I'll play some Nick Drake next time, but, um, but instead I thought we could play a, a classic Dylan track. I'm yeah. a big fan of Dylan. Yeah. Just Like a Woman, it's just beautiful, and, uh, and that's my song for the ladies. We won't see you next week, Ricky's away, but there should be a hilarious, uh, compilation for our best <laughs> moments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I look forward to that. <laughs> Nobody feels